Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. Boom. Early. What do you think about that? Minus. Minus a minor um, host. <laughs> I don't think he was that important. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Um, he, was, he wasn't that important, right? Like, I know his, his name and face is in the title, but, you know, it's all... Hey, what title? What face? There's yeah, no actually, face. That's, that's right. Welcome to the Japanese History Channel. <laughs> <laughs> actually, if you look at the top, I don't know if the audience can see it, but Barry Laro is more of a host <laughs> than uh, <laughs> Jimmy character. Yeah, that's right. And then we've also got... I don't know if that's in shot either. That is definitely okay. not in shot. Well, Lithgo... Behind you. Yeah, just right. I know it is, look. Right there, Lithgo Chicken, sponsored by Lithgo Chicken Shop, uh, catering. Um, have we got people wanna, on board? Should we, Are we should we tell them why Jordan isn't here? Yeah, so Jordan got kicked off. First it was me, but then, you know, obviously everyone came to their senses. And then Jordan, oh, did he leave? Kicked off or well, left? Well, he left. But, okay, you need to tell us if this is a valid reason for leaving the pot for good. <laughs> And abandoning your best friends. Yeah, yeah. We said that Tony Robbins may be a scam. Yeah, we said like, I think it was fair to pay, you know, maybe eight grand for a uh, for a seminar, but ten's just taking the piss. So, <laughs> and then and then and then he and then he was like, "That's it. I don't need this shit. I, I he, he's I've giving got me- better friends. <laughs> I've got Neil, Isaac. That's right." That have- I've got famous friends famous with, friends, with yeah. real credentials. Yeah, dude, you are Isaac and I'm Neil. <laughs> <laughs> He's got our replacements already. Me dick stinks. I don't know if you can even say that on Twitch, but uh, <laughs> so yeah, Jordan's left permanently and now we're, it's just, it's called the Friendly Geordies podcast, but it's just me and Ali. And I, I think it'll be seamless. I don't think anyone will I notice. I will be better. You're, if you're considering on leaving, mm. you're going to miss out on so much. Yeah. Dude, the funny thing is the, the fucking <laughs> chat is just riddled with, we know he's on tour. We know he's <laughs> on tour. <laughs> I love it. I love your accent too. Like, you know, he's on tour. Uh, well, uh, he yeah, look, on tour. He's we, in Milton. He's on tour. We, we, I, I don't think that charade would last very long. Like, I, even if we tried, yeah, even right. if we had like the most solid alibi that Jordan had left his own pod and left us here and we're now continuing the Friendly Jordan's pod without Jordan, it'd have to be like master manipulator <laughs> like people barely that would be a hard thing to sell yeah like me getting fired it's just <laughs> it's bound to really happen plausible. it's bound to happen <laughs> particularly because half of the audience were recommending that's that. right when half the audience was like yay no, uh actually not half maybe well, one tenth uh, well, that's still sizable still still, still, <laughs> still some real history buffs that don't like me butting in being like I reckon Lonerism was not Tame's best album. It's still a sick album. They weren't into And understandably, but uh, Jordan is not, has not left. He's just on but tour. But that's okay. Yeah. Uh, if you want to leave, hey, by all means do it. You'll see him next week. But yeah. stick around. You might be entertained. We're like the, uh, this is the, the bed frame of the uh, operation. You know, me and Ali are like the, the, we've got two legs each of the bed frame. Jordan's the frilly pillows. So, you know. Yeah, who needs pillows? You know, like, pillows are great, but, you know, you need some foundations here. We're, we're, you know, two working class men here. We're, we're not famous. Yeah. We don't know the, we don't, we don't know how these, uh, you know, self-help, like, operations go. We don't know about Patreon. We don't know about. Uh, hey, I do. <laughs> you might not. Okay, okay. But anyway, look. <laughs> no, uh, but it's, just stick around. Stick around. It'll, I know uh, the pre-show is supposed to be Jordan answering, um questions um so maybe we cut that in half and you ask us a few questions if you want yeah to. ask us about this like again the streets man the streets we're from the streets so uh you want to know about the the op, you know the, the, like boots on the ground stuff let us know all right so the first one is my uh, thing's not working for some reason so i'm gonna cut my twitch but that's i'll let okay i'll, I'll let you cover it um uh tiggle debiddies I think that's the name. Shout out. Is, uh, his question is, who does a better accent? Ali doing an Aussie accent or Miss Love doing a Paki <laughs> accent? Let's one, of, one of those is acceptable. I'm not allowed to do that apparently, right? Nah, look, Jordan um, isn't here. So <laughs> this is this Jordan is w- going to be cancel worthy. And I would <laughs> not feel any sorrow whatsoever because... It, there's there's going to be so much spicy stuff coming. Oh, God. Imagine if the, the pod got cancelled 
The friendly Geordies got can- pod got cancelled without friendly Geordies that, knowing about it or being on okay, it. That's okay because then the pod wouldn't get cancelled. We would get cancelled, and I am okay with that. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's do it. All right. Well, my Australian action is that you got to you got to like a shitty town in country New South Wales. If you got to yeah, I'll tell you a true story, mate. I went yeah. to Queensland <laughs> and I went up to the butler and I said, "Mate, oh shit, yeah. Do you do you have any twoies new?" <laughs> His response was, fuck off, mate. This is Queensland. Forex gold or get the fuck out of here. All right, so that's mine. That was pretty good, but you got to say, you, you got to say gotta. Gotta. Yeah, Wait, gotta. Instead you, of? You were like, did more like gotta. Gotta, like American. Gotta. Like, I'm, you got to say like, I gotta go. All right, okay. Practice it. I gotta. 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 There you go. Gotta go. Like gotta go. Ricotta. Yeah, like ricotta. Gotta ricotta. All right, this is such valuable yeah. information. I think I will succeed in this country. No, that was now. actually that was actually good. Yeah, well look, I've had ten years of practice. Yeah, you know? yeah. You've been here for ten years, I've yeah. I've been here for That's a, a decade. long time. Why do I keep God, I'm such a I'm such a dick. I'm just like yeah, you don't know a thing. It's like you've been here like longer than me, basically. Yeah, in like a few years I would have I would be in I would that's a long time. Yeah, but like I would have spent more time in Australia than I would have spent in Pakistan in like a few years. That's amazing. Yeah, well, there you go. Legit. Uh, All right, mine. You do your packing. <laughs> but like in, in, but the thing is, my packing is oh accents, so but speaking English. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> hello, how are? <laughs> hello, how's it going? I uh, I would like to know how to get to Kurachi, please. I need to go to pray. I have. I've only prayed. Uh, 60 times today so I am dangerously under my quota level of praying today and I also am looking for the mystical fat bald man with the boiled egg my religion speaks very highly of him and I and, and legend says if you eat the egg you acquire eternal life <laughs> all right okay here's the thing here's, you gave me a few tips. I want some I'll pointers. give you a few tips on that <clears throat> let's get a poll going and Let's see who won. But yeah, we don't need Jordan. Yeah, we don't need Jordan. But he, here's my tips. Yeah. This is this is like, and it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. Most of the Indian accents mm-hmm. are inspired by Apu, which is fine. He's a character. Yeah, that's But cool. Apu's accent is based on South Indian accent. Really? So it changes as you go to North India. In, Pac, in Paki uh, land, you yes. would find the North Indian accent. So instead of going like, okay, instead of saying, thank you, come again, <laughs> it's more like, thank you, come again. It's, it's slightly inflections. Uh, yeah, it's less rhythmic. Thank you. Come again. Thank it's like you. Come again. What are you doing? That is uh, South Indian. Yeah. Uh, North Indian is like, what are you doing? Damn, that does sound more like Pakistan. It does. You're right. Oh, you haven't been. How would you know? It just seems like a more. Well, it's not India, right? They're different yeah. countries. Well, it's, let's be real. It's basically the same. Uh, look, I haven't been, but I'm just assuming from from the very little I've seen in regards to like, you know, uh, people I've met, even like anyway, people I've met from Pakistan, like it seems more like, uh, yeah, I guess like a low, like less animated, a bit more stoic, a bit more like mountain-esque, you know? You know what I mean? A bit more like, not as dynamic, not like extreme highs, extreme lows, yeah. you know, like like up and down. It's kind of just more like, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, we also, we don't have, um, I, don't, I would include North Indians as this. We don't have the head wobble thing, which yeah, South yeah. Indians have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was That's... equally confusing for me when I first <laughs> experienced it with a Sri Lankan. Oh, really? I was telling him something and he kept, I was explaining him something and he kept going. And I had to stop. I was like, wait, are you, are you having a fit? You, no, no, not the fit. I was like. It's really distracting when, like, I'm trying to explain you something, and right. you keep saying, "No, that's not correct. That is not correct. That is not correct." Like, Let me finish, and he's like, "No, I'm agreeing with yeah, you." Yeah, yeah. I've actually read about it, and apparently, it's a weird thing of like, um, it's not nodding. It's similar though. It's kind of like a lazy nod, kind of like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah." I, I kind of know what you're saying, I guess. I, like, I've yeah, heard, I've read about it. It's like it's almost like I'm, a, I'm acknowledging. I'm acknowledging you, and um, it's kind of just being like. It's almost like responding without speaking. It's like, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, no, I'm hearing you or something like that, right? Here's another cultural quirk which I've noticed in North Indians in particular, which is, okay, if they are trying to explain to you something, they'll do a thing which really distracts. Like, let's say you were, you're talking to them and you're explaining them something and they're thinking about something. They'll be like, but you know what the problem is? 
they'll make a sound. Really? In the middle. That can't be that can't be relegated to a country. Well, at least a region. But they go right. Which sounds like when they do it in the flow, it sounds like it's really dismissive of what you're saying. Right. Like, Stop annoying me. But it's more like they're they're actually agreeing with you. They're like, that's um, a good point. And I'm gonna elaborate more on that point, but I have to go before that. Damn, for some that's reason. so interesting. Cultural quirks. We don't have any like yeah. Like I feel like yeah, ours is just kind of like, you know, it just revolves around fairy bread and that's it. Like, do you want some is fairy that, bread? <laughs> I'm trying to think of like particularly Aussie quirks. Mate, just saying mate on everything. And finishing a sentence finishing a sentence with but. Do you want to go but? but do you yeah. want to go but? Yeah, do you want to go It doesn't grammatically but? make sense. Like, but on a question mark. Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Which is really, because it's... You're saying two different things over there. It's true. Is it here or is it not? Yeah, no, it's interesting because it's kind of like, it's a polite way to say no. Instead of saying no or nah, you're like, yeah, nah. It's kind of like saying, look, you, you, I understand where you're coming from, but no. Yeah, I, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, I say it too sometimes. Yeah. Okay, is this particular, I think Canadians say it too, but in a different way. A. a that's definitely Canadian and definitely Aussie. It, uh, but Aussie say it. It's true, eh? Whereas Canadians use it more frequently in different contexts. Yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. They'll kind of be like, um, exactly right. Like Canadians will be like, hey, it's Greek, D-E, yeah, something, it's something, something, E. Whereas I suppose I just do that as well. It's their mate. It's their mate. Yeah, exactly. It's their mate. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. All right, so let's see if we got any questions. Yeah, do we have any? Uh, Marilini is wait, saying, is there a poll? Ali say beginning, beginning. There you go, I don't people. Really understand which, which up Just for that. you. Nothing wrong with the beginning. How's so, playing shows again, Miss Love? That's a question uh, for you. Ooh, well, good. I mean, I'm not really playing shows. I played a show, and it was great fun with our friends Dress Tech. Check them out. T H E Q U E. Not an easy spelling, but yeah, we played with them. It was actually great. It was fun. It's fun. You're you're. Pretty much playing shows every weekend now, right? No, no. But I do have. It's funny though. I do have one in two weeks <laughs> at the Duke. I do have another one coming That's up. That's cool. You know what sucks though, dude? What? We had a show booked with these guys called Verge Collection in Melbourne. We we're gonna be playing in Melbourne, and we we're about to announce it. We we're like, we're going to Melbourne, <clears throat> and then because of COVID, because they're in Perth, or they they went to Brizzy. I don't know some weird shit. Cancelled. They couldn't do the show. Oh, uh, in Brizzy? No, in Melbourne. Why can't you do it in Melbourne? I don't know. It's because like they went to Brizzy or something. Oh, and okay, they're like, okay. oh, you got so to quarantine. quarantine. So now they're like, yeah, dude, we just canceled the Melbourne show. So I'm like, I just want to play somewhere else. But yeah, I could have waited a bit longer. But just oh. hold your horses one day. I'm hold your ho- you know what I can also do? This could be a good um, intervention. Pre show activity. Yeah. Mish. Do you know what I did last week? Tell me. Oh. I got my... Oh, wait. Sorry, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. Let's bring them on. I yeah. got my vaccine shot. I am uh, protected from COVID-19. And well, he's not passing it on to me. <laughs> you know what's funny? Okay, this is a true story. So when I told yeah, yeah, Miss yeah. Love that I'm going to get vaccinated... So Miss good. Love, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. Miss Love was more concerned about getting the vaccine than COVID. He was like... Give me COVID, don't give me vaccine. <laughs> no, yeah, he was getting the vaccine and I was just like, oh, you know, I can't catch that, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. So the question is, it seems like most of you are close to getting your vaccine too, apparently, but um, <sighs> which one are the, I got, oh yeah, this is the cool bit. I mean, it kind of, it feels bad saying this, but I got the good one, baby. Pfizer. I got Pfizer, luckily. I mean, um, I don't know. Like, you don't want to say. But apparently no. the other one is really shit. It's giving yeah. people blood clots. <laughs> Look, my opinion is I'm no, I'm no anti-vaxxer. I'm not. But I think a vaccine's uh, rollout usually takes, what, a decade? Isn't that the timeline to, to, to form a vaccine? At 10 years? Um, is that incorrect? Ten, it can take up to 10 years. But you know what it is? I'm just I've dubious been- of the, the speed at which there is such a, um, what do you call it? 
demand, obviously, understandably, for it, that it's not an impossibility that some factors would have been overlooked in the creation of the... I looked more into it, yeah. and I found out how it's possible to do it so quickly. I mean, you look so fine, though. Those, you seem fine. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. Um, no, um, you haven't so got dementia yet? People are asking me, and I think it's a fair question, how the fuck did you get it so quickly? Uh, it's because... Um, because of my mom. So my mom has to deal with uh, people in quarantine at times. And if if you are exposed to um, incoming passengers, then your household is also recommended to get vaccine. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. why. So I'm not breaking. I, I did think of like scamming the audience and say, no, nah, bro, I got a hookup. <laughs> a deep I've sent it to <laughs> me. I've got a hookup. He brings me my weed and my vaccines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that's how I got it. But it was, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm very glad that I got Pfizer because I'm afraid of the other one now. Well, I've been watching too much news. I didn't even know about the distinction, to be honest. But like, hey, look, it's not nearly that bad. I, I, I don't want to sort of uh, hype the wrong thing. Mm. Apparently, um, younger people are a very, very tiny minority of people under the age of fifty are more are prone to getting blood, blood clots, clots uh, after getting the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is going to be the major vaccine that we receive. Right. And um, they initially thought it was like one in a million. Mm. And it turns out it's like one in 100,000. That's going to keep which shrinking. Is like, which is still, <laughs> uh, hopefully not, but it's still like, so let's just say because of this, 24 people in Australia will die or not die, but like will get critically ill, yes. possibly die. Careful what you say. <laughs> I don't know. Look, it's look, that's the odds, right? Yeah. I mean, but then more people would likely die from COVID. So it's just still statistically a lot better. That's true. Uh, look, as I said, my, my opinion is, uh, is that of, I'm still dubious with the details, but I got this email from someone, uh, a message from a, like a family friend recently saying like, urgent sign this petition uh, the government is thinking of instituting what you said like travel cards uh, like validation identity you know identity cards for vaccines to travel we have to sign this petition to stop you know what i mean i know i'm but, probably gonna but, sign but it but here's the thing i have uh i thought that was gonna be the case and it most likely will be the case miss still really but they're getting a lot of backlash for that policy in the uk Right. In the UK, because like UK and the US and Israel and basically most of the first world countries that are not Australia yeah. are at a really advanced stage of their vaccine rollout. Yes. Yeah. Am I right? It's pretty... Sh we could talk about it in the main one, like how shit we've been at sort of procuring. And, yeah, but we're still... Whole bungle up, but... We are still doing the, uh, the regular podcast available on Patreon, right? Yeah. yeah. Up so late, up late. That's the one, up late. So we're still doing that. This week. Um, but so <coughs> in the UK, they tried to introduce the vaccine passport and oh, they've gotten okay. a huge backlash. In Australia? In the UK. Ah, because yeah. I think it's stupid. But look, again, I'm, I'm just, I am basically a bricklayer. So like my opinion is always like- It's not stupid. The argument I think is, maybe we should talk about it on the main pod. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's do we'll that. We'll talk about this Twitch is the probably pod, like mi is. Mr. Twitch is probably, you know- <laughs> Mr. Jim Twitch is just watching us just sweating in his suit being like, come on, let's move it on, boys. I, I assume that's how Twitch works. One man sits in a big golden chair yeah, with every single s Twitch screen and just being like, that guy showed his foot. That guy did this thing, you know. It, look, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of getting nervous about these uh, comments because <laughs> Tickle Beaties is saying more people would die from COVID, but not the people who are likely to get blood clots yet. Oh, right. wait, so it's not a... Yeah, that is the case. Apparently, they're saying that um, it's more prevalent amongst young people that are less likely to die from COVID anyways. Oh. Look, it's, it's, it is what it is, but statistically, and I, I can safely say this, this mm. bit I know, it is, statistically speaking, you are more likely to die from COVID than you are to die from the AstraZeneca I, vaccine. Of course. By a big margin. I'm not... So yes. it's, still, it's still better off. And also, the other thing is... Maybe this is good that it's on the pre-show. We don't have any other options, man. Like if we try and wait for the Pfizer vaccines or the Moderna vaccines, we're looking at if vaccinating our people by 2022 or even 2023. 
Couldn't this if couldn't, we switch over from AstraZeneca? It's couldn't the virus just roll out? N- no, like hypothetical, no vaccinations, many more deaths. But hypothetically, it would just roll out, and people that are ill and old would be more would be targeted more. But uh, wait. What are you saying? So, like, the virus rolls out yeah. or the vaccine? So, no vaccine, just let the virus yeah. rip through? Yeah, so um, a fair few people will die. Yeah. Mostly old people, but... Yeah, but yeah look, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a bloody, what do you call it, like... Scientist, uh, doctor. Yeah, no, not... A, I'm, Epidem- I'm not, I'm not like a... I'm not like a I'm not Stalin. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to like transform a society. And, but I, I'm just, I'm just, I just think it's healthy to be dubious to an extent of everything in life. To be skeptical is to ask healthy questions and to explore all avenues. But what you're saying makes sense. You know, like a lot more people would die without the vaccine. I understand that. So For sure. it's literally like clockwork. What I mean, about, what about, if like those more susceptible get the vaccine, I suppose that's irrelevant. Well, that's how they want to do. Ideally, that's that was the entire requirement for the vaccines. At least get people that are um, are more susceptible to dying. At yeah. least let them get the vaccine. That's why like our phase one A was like border workers, and one B is like nurses and old yeah. people and aged care people. So it we are targeting that. You know, some countries are doing it the opposite way. Like, I remember Indonesia. Indonesia started off with vaccinating their youngest people first. Okay. Their theory is, there, there's two points of view towards it. Mm. First point of view is that um, it's being spread by young people. So Like passively it, or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. mostly the spread is happening from young people to older people, rather than older people to young people. So Mm -hmm. if you can block it amongst young people who are more mobile, then um, you'll protect the older people anyways. But the other point of view is, and let's be real, this is most likely the reason why they did it. (laughs) They want to protect their economy. So it's like a really utilitarian approach where how how do we make sure that our GDP reduces at a rate that is... um, at the least, uh, at, a, at a rate that is not super high. And that's Wait. like you protect the people that are actually contributing to the economy the most. Oh. So you you vaccinate them so they take less days off of work, they but don't s- die. But statistically, older people are more likely to yeah. suffer from it anyway. Yes, but if old people die... Okay, this is like, I am not advocating this by any means. This is just a hype. But this is just from an s- economic point of view, <clears throat> an really old person dying is good for the economy. But I know that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. Yeah. So like the they only- probably, it, Indonesia probably didn't have to do anything. Just, just sit back and- Yeah, so that's, so that's <clears> the utilitarian <throat> point of view that you protect the economy and you do that by, young, by protecting young people. They were basically, that was their insurance policy. They're like, ah, we're just going to insure, insure our young people. There's so many countries dependent on tourism. Like, oh can man. Can you imagine? It's, uh, like how yeah. far, Fiji. You were I was in Fiji. In, I was in Fiji when a Fijian flight attendant, a Fijian man came back positive and the country went into lockdown. Yeah. The the military was was being ordered onto the streets and we had to get the the beep out. We but you know what? Out. It's the opposite now. Where now I was watching a documentary on um either Bali or I think it was Bali actually. And um Dude, they're they're screwed. Really? Like the only thing that's keeping Bali Actually, afloat they would be. is um a bunch of people, like really, really nice people who quickly diverted their farms to Bali to hire workers to pick spinach and shit. Oh. Which is keeping like at least thirty to forty percent of the unemployed people f- float at I a never, really low rate. I never thought about it. Cause yeah, Bali is a a, a tourism economy, like Australians. Basically, and not just Australians, heaps, every, everyone. A lot of people, right? A lot of these, which is a good testament of why your economy should not be one dimensional. Yes, it has to be, what's the word? Well, yeah, like multifaceted or yeah. like rather um, 
it can adapt. It has many, it has, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it needs so to true. be able to adapt, which is why I've been, um, Jordan as well, and like all of us, have been a very strong advocate of diversifying the Australian yeah, economy because we have a similar situation. Dude, it's common sense. That's what it is. It's 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 easier said than done, but yeah. it needs to happen. It, it, with us, do you think it's a it's a situation of not just relying on exports of like coal and 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 iron yeah. ore and stuff? Is that the essentially key? Uh, the commodities export yeah. business? Because that is our main. There's there's a few people that like. <coughs> There, there are problems over there because you would meet climate activists that would say, you know, mining is only 20% or whatever uh, of our economy. And that's true. Most of it is services. But if you really look at it, most of the services industry is built on the mining industry as well. Like mm. all the banks and all the stuff. They're really just rolling on the commodity totally. export market. So yeah. we are, we're a bit like Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Um, yeah. And luckily for us, we're not solely dependent on oil. We're also dependent on things like iron ore, mostly <laughs> iron ore, which is still required. Like people still need to build stuff. So yeah. we're not nearly as bad as that. But again, it's the same thing. You're, you're <sighs> Renewables, is that what we need to invest in? What are we, batteries? <laughs> like what, 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 what do we need to invest in, in terms of- what I'm, I'm not saying that you need to invest in one oh, sorry. thing. Sorry, Cha- what do we need? Well, yeah, when you say the economy, I mean, it's just- produce it's just industries right so what do we have to do yeah i one of the one of the like the 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 superpower thesis which is a book that i think has been trending for a while is that we essentially become the clean energy exporters of the world that would be dope which is which is dope and we definitely need to be doing that but if we were only doing that then we would still be in the same problem yeah true that's a good point <laughs> so what you really it's need kind of to like be, it's i think of, we need to be heavily investing mm. in um, high-end manufacturing. So like Maseratis. a lot of people, and you don't want to put someone like, I don't want to like, you know, we, we are doing great work and everything, but we, in terms of these vaccines, for instance, we are producing vaccines that are created by companies that are not Australian. Yeah. India is doing the same thing. Mexico is doing the same thing. We're Australia. We're better than them. So we should really... Sorry, I, I don't know. I just, no, we're yeah, a developed we're, country. We're, they're, we're, like, India we're a rich country. We're very poor. Yeah, we are, yeah, yeah. You're much richer. We're one of the <clears> richest. <throat> so I'm not trying to put anyone down. But ideally, we should be... We should have had our own vaccine. There was a Queensland... Um, uh, like a University of Queensland uh, vaccination program, which unfortunately failed. But that was also based on um, on primitive technology, in my opinion. Okay. The these Pfizer these mRNA vaccines are insane. We can well let's why don't why, why don't we do this? We we can yes. Yeah, so come on. back. How, how are the crowd going? Is everyone just like where's Jordan? Tesla for Ali. Uh, yes. Now they're they're really, really uh, talking about what we are also talking about. They're cool too. Some of them are saying is this Melbourne show still sold out? They're, so, they're missing him so much that they're willing to fly to Melbourne immediately <laughs> to see him. Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Prony isn't here. Yeah, he Where is Jordan? Fuck. Look, uh, he's dead. He's, yeah. COVID he, got him. Yeah. But how about this? Look, we this was supposed to be the pre-show. Mm-hmm. Mm, just for continuity's sake, we'll take a quick break. Yeah, let's do it. And then we'll come back for the main pod. And we'll discuss vaccines and why I think. Anyways, we'll talk about we'll it when we come back, and, uh, and we'll see you then. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll see you guys in a sec. We'll, we'll still answer some questions in a bit. Welcome back to the friendly Jimmy, friendly Geordies podcast. Minus friendly Geordies, who is on tour because we said that um, Tony Robbins is a scam, and he never came back. Yeah, he just had a hissy fit. He said, "I said he's great, but you shouldn't." You shouldn't put your mortgage, remortgage your house to meet him. And then he just... <laughs> what house? It's weird that that guy still doesn't have a house. That's I'm true. pretty sure he can afford some house. <laughs> yeah, Penrith, maybe. <laughs> he could get... I don't know. No, he I could. really don't understand his finances. Too. Let's not disclose his finances. I don't live know. I, that's the thing. I don't know. He could be really rich or he could be really poor. Yeah. Who knows? I don't think he knows. <laughs> that's the funny part. <laughs> I think he's just sort of like, as long as he's got that fish tank right there... Yeah. 
All is well. Particularly when he tells his accountant to tax him more and the accountant's like, I don't make the rules. And he's like, no, no, I think I need to give more tax. And he's like, never, just fuck off. I've never met a man that enjoys paying tax as much as that man. I sure as hell don't. I'm always just like, that goddamn, the man's trying to take my money. Like, you know, like the like I barely contribute to society and then I get angry when they take anything back. Jordan, the opposite, you know? Yeah. And uh, let's be real. Look, I think I'm somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Well, I understand that paying taxes is good for society <laughs> and I'm willing to put in my shit. No, I am but too. But I'm I not enthusiastic when I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm happy about it, but I'm going to, no, I'm, I'm grumpy and I'm going to complain and I'll say they should be lower, but <laughs> I- You in, really should be a liberal voter. No, no, no. I know, but I know that um, I like Medicare. I like roads. You know, actually, that's true. Whenever I, I don't know if you receive that, but you know when you get that letter in mail which tells you where your money was spent on? Like I, never what, got, I never got that. I think I've got it like once. And that is one of the most satisfying things. When you receive that, you're like, actually, I have no problem with giving tax. Because mm. the only thing that I, I had like a bit of a problem with was like, the defense spending was a bit higher than I wanted it to be. Right. So right, I right. was like not too happy about my tax dollars going there, but did yeah. everything else on the list. I was like, yeah, fine. Really? I'm happy with that. One's just says the Easter show. <laughs> <laughs> One just says it's like sumo bag and like the beetle bum bag. It's like, how are there so many beetle juice bags? <laughs> whatever the fuck that one's called. <laughs> yeah. That's explicitly written tax. <laughs> Easter Beatles. show bags. Um, Dag with dogs. All right, so look, um, before we went on our break, we were talking about something. We'll just finish. Yeah, yeah. We'll finish that. So we were talking about um, vaccines, mm -hmm. and I got my first jab. Yeah, he's and you seem to be doing. Uh, you seem to be doing fun. Yeah, birdie beetle. Thank you, the birdie beetle bag. Um, you <laughs> hey, that bag sucked. Do you know the birdie beetle bag? No, but I'm planning on going to the Easter show. Soon. You've never been. I have, but uh, I've never got the show bags. You. That's the only, that's the best part of it, the show I've bag. I've heard it's a joke. Like, they're not good. They weren't a joke when I was a kid. I never understand with you and Jordan, like, what is, what is ironically yeah. good and what is actually no, no, no. good? Please, don't lump me in with that. I'm not like that. That's Jordan. And, uh, you know, whatever, the, the rat. Those two are, uh, uh, are Ironic like- Ironic kings. Yeah. For me, like, there's a bit of that, but like, no, look, the, the show bags were- great as a kid they're so fun and now they're like nostalgic fun you know you get one or two they're a bit of, they're a bit of nostalgic fun they're not crap mm. but the birdie beetle bag sucks it's the it's the bag that everyone gets if they're like on the dole and can't afford What's a real it? one it's like really small and it's some chocolate called birdie beetle and um it's like it's honestly like the Maggi noodles of bags. You get like a couple of those. I don't even know what Birdie Beetle is. It's like a poor man's uh, Freddo frog. So you get a couple of those and like, you know, I don't know, like a like a puzzle, like a, <laughs> those like find Birdie Beetle and maybe like, I don't know, a pair of socks. It sucks that bag. The sumo and the sumo bag, not to, we're going back to the vaccine, but the sumo bag is the bag you get because I used to get it quite a bit. When um, you're a kid, and you don't have a lot of money and your parents are only going to buy you one bag or maybe two max two is the max. So sumo, the sumo bag is the bag you get when you are like a kid, your parents are, you know, they're not going to spoil you. Um, and the sumo bag is just filled with shit. <laughs> it's just this giant bag. And it's like, it's this, it's this whole theory. Like if you have a whole, like if you have a little bit of crap, Oh, it sucks. But if you have a whole bag of useless shit, well, then it's pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, okay, okay. So the quantity beats quality. quality. That's okay. the sumo pack, which I do not recommend. I, uh, anyway, uh, I would recommend you just pick out, you know what's cool about the, the you can tell I'm, I'm missing it, but is it on now? No, COVID. No, it's on. It's on. Yeah. I'm, I'm going. I am going. I'm so going, sorry. But uh, what you do as an adult is you go to get a show bag and there's like nice adult ones, like nice food ones and like chips ones with dips and stuff. Has and that ruined it? 
No. Is the point of an Easter show bag that it's like really nah. basic? No, nah, it's always shit. it's always had the nice ones for adults. I like all of them. It's got whatever you, it's got every I don't understand how this became like an Aussie like it's a phenomenal nationalistic uh it a, is a rite of passage it essentially. Is a, it is. It's like that bunning snag <laughs> and going to a birthday party with like hundreds of thousands over like butter. Fairy and, bread. And, and it's ha- fairy bread. And being like socially compelled to say, yeah, this is really, really good. Just I, I love red it. Red butter and like sugar. Which- I love it. You know, it's really funny. And I, I, not to keep devolving, but I, I, I rewatched that clip where you had a freak out meltdown about bunning snags. <laughs> and I watched it like 10 times recently. I just watched it over and over because I thought it was so funny. And, uh, yeah, my, my stance is still the it's same. Still the same. Yeah, but I, but I, but I haven't I, gotten anything. I've gotten but I misspoke. I said that the, I, I misspoke. I said that the, uh, the stale bread is the is the whole point of it. And someone was like, "That's not the whole point." And he's right. It's not. What I meant to say is, this is what I meant to say. I, I wanted to tell you this because it's like it's the detail, right? So <clears throat> white bread, <laughs> it shows how bogan Australia is. But white bread, tip top bread. When you leave it out a bit. Right, you leave it out for like three to four hours. Yeah. Um, the crust goes a little bit harder, so it's gone. You know, it's just getting it's oxidizing. The bread goes a bit. The, the crust goes a bit harder, and the the middle is like, if anything, goes a bit softer. Right, so it's it's like anyone would think that that's like a little bit worse, but from growing up, this is just me personally. From growing up eating fairy bread, or anything on Wonder Why, like tip top, anything, just just my whole life, just Aussie, you know, kids, childhoods. You, I'm sure everyone listening would, would agree. From from doing that my my whole life, um, when you go to when you go to Bunnings and the, the bread is essentially stale, and you've got everything, you know, the, all the I personally like it more. <laughs> It's the same fucking thing that you again. This is the same thing that Jordan has too. You know how he likes it's like he'll he'll like animations only if it's got like really crummy graphics. Yeah, it's like a, it's like he's an ideologue. Yeah, and I, I guess, guess I, I am too. But let's just say, look, and you've you've tried to justify it through like this fucking whole test kitchen approach that you've got there. It's like actually, you know, the oxidization <laughs> process. Let's, where's my where's my white coat? Wait, hold on. The, <laughs> the, the crumbs get really better because of that. It's like it's harder. Yeah, it's just what I'm used to. It's, it's called fermentation. You know what it is? It's pure familiarity. To me, it's like putting on an old pair of jeans. I just love it. So I. Can't understand your gripes, but on what? But on a logical, like on a on a literal level, I can't understand it. But in a, in a theoretical level, I do understand. Oh, okay, I'll admit this. I will give you that. I I always get bunning snacks. I love it, but em. that's because, again, this is a really un-Australian <laughs> thing to say. But no, to dude, me, ro- one it. of the most boring places on earth is Bunnings Warehouse. Like, Miss okay, Love is I, Jamie I, Oliver. Sorry, go on. I think you have to be Aussie to be like really excited about nails and hammers. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember I like going in I, there and people being excited. <laughs> like there's ads on, boy, you take your dad to Bunnings. He'll love it. It's like, that's a chore for me. I know. Going I, to Bunnings I know. and being like, no, 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 check this out. This particular <laughs> nut is slightly better than this particular nut. And trust me, 80 years ago, <laughs> you couldn't even get these. Like, Dude, you should be thankful. It's so true that that is the Aussie experience. Like, that is what so many Aussies love. Like, tell us in the comments if you agree. But I, you are totally right. Like, that is what people like. That is what people want. Bunnings have plans too. It's like, yes. So does like a national park. I'd prefer to go there. KMTO, Miss Love is pit, spitting pure facts. Uh, look, people... But I mean, everyone is Australian over here. Yeah, they it's they true. live in the dogma. They live in I a know. world where they can't imagine That's anything true. else. And we live in the dogma. No, I can see and that. My biggest problem is this attitude <laughs> is getting all of these, but whoever like is cooking these snag, it's just, there's it's no always room for improvement. <laughs> Cause they're like, we're making the best thing in the world. Clearly. Dude, you know, what's crazy. And I know, I know you're just like, you're an ideologue. You're a contrarian. You're just talking shit. And we've covered this, but I wouldn't. Sh- I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, you would not want to make. You know what I would say? Tastes better. Here's the, I for me, it can't. For, for me, that specific food can't be improved. 
for me. Okay, okay. There, here's the story. We I, need I, to I, really get into some I, substantive I, stuff. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. I wish they had more onions. I you, like more you onions. Go into you go into like a nice uh, Italian restaurant. Okay. And you different sit thing, there and the and there is a waiter that comes with a tuxedo and says, uh, "Would you uh, would you like sparkling or tap?" And yeah. you go like, "You know what? I'm in the mood to splurge. Sparkling, please." Yeah, yeah. And they're like, uh, "And would you like to have special?" <laughs> it's called uh, Aussie Delight. Yeah, and it comes out with a stale tip top bread, yes. a fucking uh, sausage, yeah, and which is which still has that cold sticker on it, <laughs> and uh, a bunch of onions, which some people get freaked out because they I don't know would slip on it. Yes, yeah, would you be okay with it? It's yes, delicious. and you'd be willing to pay whatever thirty five forty dollars no. for it. The price is right with a bunning snack. I'm not happy to pay fifty bucks for it. It's the whole package. I like paying three bucks or whatever four bucks. I, I f- to me personally, it's like, you know what it is. To this is what. Oh my god, I can't believe I didn't think of this. This is exactly what it is. I'm a genius. All right, TikTok. Uh, TikTok. What are we on? Twitch. Prepare to be amazed. <clears throat> bunning snags are Australians version of tacos. They're Aussie tacos. Look, I understand that point of view, but They're cheap, I don't know how to salty, break this to you. Is it carbs, Mace. meat, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's it, nutritionally it might be the same, but I don't know, uh, tacos have coriander in it, so it's slightly well, better. Not exactly but the, the point same. is, tacos are better than bunning snacks, Mace. Like. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I mean, you can't be like five times out of ten. Version of the shepherd's pie is this blob of meat. <laughs> our pie equivalent. Look, we're gonna have to. I know this is a sore spot for for you. <laughs> I can have to agree okay, to disagree. I just all I wanted to stipulate is that I was wrong to say when I said it was miscommunicated when I said the 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 stale bread. That's the point. I mean, it's the package. I, if you leave Tip Top out for three hours. And, and, and it you, gets better. Yeah. I like All it right, stale. Fine, I like fine. stale bread and on look, sausages. The, the but, entire but, audience is with you. Are they? Uh, I don't want to. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus me. here. They want to like, <laughs> they're saying the, the consistency is good. It's consistently bad. <laughs> That's not true. Okay. Look. But look, anyway, I just, I just, look, we don't have to like agree to disagree. You know what? It would be the same. And I, and, and I, I, I am to, to give you, to extend an olive branch. It is. Pure, um, what do you call it? Um, familiar familiarity. That's what it is to me. I know that if I went to Pakistan, probably not me because I, I'll eat anything. I, lo- I love kind of everything. But I think if I went to Pakistan and you know tried the fucking like deep fried uh, <laughs> meat patty in the oil, I would probably too be like, dude, this is kind of shit. And then you'd be like, it's our national look. It's- you know what? Fair enough. Yeah. If there is So anything- I'm extending an olive branch here. Like I, I'm not being like, you're crazy. I get it. Dude, it's th- just- if you go there, you're going to find a lot of things that are shit. Yeah. Like for example, you know what the, the version, remember when I made you try pack cola, that green drink? Which is, <laughs> let, let's be like it's supposed to be the national drink, and you were like, "This is shit," and I was like, "You don't know anything. This is great." <laughs> Ex- that was that's our this, version, exactly. But what, that's your bunning but snack. But what I'm saying is, if you said that, no, dude, this is shit, I would have to agree. After okay. A certain point. Why didn't I like it? What was wrong with it? I forgot. It's not great. Does no it one t- does it taste it. minty. I made like my, uh, I made <laughs> my girlfriend's I love dad called- try it. Who was like, "Well, I like the novelty, but it's kind of shit." Yeah. But see, this is what, but see, this is the, this is, you know what's the takeaway here? I'm not being nationalistic. The takeaway here is human beings' ability to, the, 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 the extreme power, the elixir of nostalgia, familiarity, and like context, and just, just nostalgia and, and melancholy and having something, you know, like Easter, Easter lunch yesterday, because I'm a wog, believe it or not, Easter lunch two days ago, my mum uh, boiled, in Croatian, they're called kestine. And in English, they're, um, what are they called? Uh, chestnuts. Oh, okay. Boiled chestnuts. chestnuts. And we used to do them over the fire, which is way better for those playing at home. But as soon as I put the chestnut in my mouth, I, haven't, I hadn't have one, had one since I was probably like 15, maybe 13. As soon as I put it on my mouth, I, I swear to God, just teleported to being a kid again, like everything, like because I hadn't tried. It just took me there because I hadn't tried it since then. It, it was a, it was a teleportation machine. It was incredible. 
So that's all it is. It's not even, it's, that's almost more poignant than the actual flavor. It's what it does for you. What I'm getting from you is that I don't, I can't evaluate Bunning Snags with my taste buds. I need to evaluate with my heart and emotion. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I wasn't using all my senses. I yes, you open your heart, right. man. Well, look, we'll, we'll quickly move on. Yeah, let's the, move on. Sorry, I'm so, thing. So sorry, sorry, let's get back to Before we it. went on the break during the pre-show, yeah. um, we were talking about Ratatouille. vaccine apprehensions that Miss Love has. Yeah. Because I got my vaccine, um, Miss Love genuinely was afraid that he'll get vaccine off of me. He's not afraid of COVID. He's afraid of getting the vaccine, <laughs> which is ridiculous. But, and, and Miss Love's point is- <laughs> It's so ridiculous. Miss Love, you, one, of your, one of the points that you made was the time constraint. That vaccines yes. take up to 10 years. Yeah. This has been so quick. Yeah. They've probably- uh, There's a huge demand. There's a huge social political, there's a huge social pressure, huge political pressure. All that's true, but here's what I learned. Because mm. I was getting the Pfizer vaccine, which is an mRNA vaccine. So I wanted to like, just Google, what the fuck is it that I'm actually gonna have? You have to say like this though. Pfizer. Pfizer. The Pfizer the vaccine. The best one out there. The best vaccine. The one that does not kill you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God, I miss it, mate. Uh, but dude, okay. It, it is, <laughs> it, does not kill you. It is, it is very, very interesting. And this will tell you, look, Back in the day, let's say for like shit like measles or whatever, it took 10 years for us to come up with a vaccine because what we really, you know, all vaccines are that they give you micro a dose little of microdose yeah. of yeah. it, right? That's yeah. traditionally how vaccines are done. Mm. Measles vaccine took 10 years because they basically had to grow the virus in a lab to the point where it was so weak that it would not actually just take over you and it, your body is able to kill it and gets used to the virus. Yeah, That's how vaccines work. These mRNA vaccines are insane. They're like really cutting edge stuff. What, okay. what it does is, so instead of having a dead virus or something that goes inside of you, what they really do is, first of all, they don't send the entire virus. They send for COVID, uh, the co uh, COVID virus has spikes on the outside, which is oh, not yeah. the thing that is the most harmful, but it is the thing that actually enables Penetrate. The virus to yeah penetrate into your body. Mm. So they're like, fuck the rest of the virus. We'll just focus on the spike. Because if that's what's getting in, then if we can if we're able to build up immunity against that, then the rest of the virus okay. is irrelevant. So that cuts down time. The second right, thing okay. that they're doing is for mRNA vaccines, they are basically not even sending the spike. They're sending the genetic language that the spike uses to make itself. Wow. So they're basically s sending data oh, into you shit. off the, let's just say the formula for that spike. So your right. body accepts that formula, mm. almost recognizes the spike because it's the same methodology and builds an immunity towards it. What, what that does is it cuts down time drastically. Wow. It wouldn't take years for you to build it. Because that is a, that is you don't need to build a virus. You just need to figure out what the formula is, which is why- That is a pretty good explanation. As, the, yeah. um, as soon as like the virus's uh, formula was published by China, it took like a few months for companies like Moderna to actually come up with a vaccine in, in testing phases, which is just unheard of because they're using basically a very, very modern technology. That is actually- So you yeah, should that, not be too afraid of this. No, thing. that's actually kind of a pretty- thorough good explanation for that because i didn't know i didn't know that that's that's definitely that definitely settles my uh yeah it gives me a different perspective for sure it I didn't could know still that. go wrong but yeah look it's been the other thing is it's been <coughs> tested close to 120 million people in the u.s have been vaccinated yeah uh like i don't know tens of millions of people in the uk have been vaccinated in israel most of the country has been vaccinated so basically we've got plenty of guinea pigs yeah what we know is <laughs> from all of these experiments that the Pfizer vaccine seems to be really good. Mm. And these basically MRNA ones seem to be good. The other ones are also good. All of the vaccines are really good at making sure you don't die from COVID, all mm. of them. And they mm. have a 100% rate of doing it. Mm. It's just Some the side of them effects. have a better rate of, um, let's say if you were vaccinated, you, some of them have a better rate of you not getting the virus at all if you were exposed to it. And some of them have 
uh, less than the blow. Less than, so you will get it, but, but you won't get really sick. It'll just yeah. be like a flu. So yeah. any vaccine is good for that. Mm. The The problem with the Astro one is um, that it's creating the blood clots, which we went through in... Um, it's not creating blood clots for everyone. P- young people have a one in a hundred thousand chance yeah, okay. of suffering from this blood clot problem. I really, but then like it's it's irrelevant. We should probably not even talk about this because Australia just has no option. Like we can't do anything about it. Yeah, there's a huge queue for getting all of these mRNA vaccines that don't have that. Um, we've invested a lot into uh, um, getting a stable supply for the AstraZeneca. Mm. So. There's really no point, and I've heard. Yeah, I say not heard. It's f- it's verifiable that a lot of doctors and um, healthcare professionals are refusing. Yeah, to to, go to get ahead. the AstraZeneca vaccine. Maybe that's the one. I mean, yeah, I haven't. Uh, it's, I, I gotta stop getting my news from like conspiracy theorists because <laughs> I basically. You know, most of I, I I listen to Infowars now just for the entertainment factor because it's just so. It's like I want to hear. Wait, how do you even watch Infowars? He's got a website. Oh, so you go to bandtv.com. dot com. You directly go on Infowars dot com. Yeah, directly, and like because I because I like to hear two two uh so like two polar opposite opinions of on any issue just because I think it's like healthy. So I'm very, very, very skeptical of him, of what he says, like almost almost exclusively. Most of the shit he says is pretty far-fetched. Um, but it's interesting to hear. But, you know, I didn't look into it at all, but he was like, it gives you dementia. Cause it f- <laughs> but again, I don't have any of the signs. Do you feel demented? You seem completely fine. So like- Oh, but apparently uh, you the worst effects are after the second dose. I've only gotten my first one. Oh, shit. So we'll see how it goes. So it's a reintroduction. Yes. But look, you know, I don't want to- I'm not going to sit here and spread uh, Alex Jones uh, sort of uh, conspiracy theories that I have barely looked into myself. I think it's healthy to be, uh, what do you call it? Um, skeptical- to, to be health, to be yeah, to be skeptical about anything, to to look into the, to explore all something options. invasive. I understand, yeah. but that was a really interesting and actually like really good explanation of why. Yeah, and I want to again stress on this because I know Jordan isn't here, but still, we would ideally not get cancelled. Um, <laughs> the AstraZeneca vaccine is safe. Yeah, or one in a hundred thousand. Majority of the yeah, people. Yeah, one in a hundred. I mean, the thing is, the, the one in a hundred thousand figure drop from one in a million. That's a huge. That's a jump. Huge. <laughs> that's a huge jump, and that's something you could look. We're just giving you the facts. You look into it yourself, and you make yeah. up your own assertions. But uh, and and they're statistically speaking, you're. It's way you're more likely to die from COVID than you are from. Of the course, vaccine. I think vaccination is a great thing. I think it's like, I mean, the amount of. Life, deaths that's prevented since polio and is is extraordinary, but I think I think it's more just in my personality to fix on, fixate on um, the worst case scenarios. It's just that's just me. Like no, like even enough. like even when they were doing um, so in high school when we were all in high school in Australia there was um, they they administered a uh, ovarian I think it was ovarian cancer for for like females across Australia when we were in high school. And I remember one girl um, from my, f- it wasn't from my school, it was a friend's school. Had a reaction? Had a, had a really bad reaction and she lost her sense of taste. Gone. Forever. Forever. Holy shit, that's Just, so good. <laughs> that, that would be so crippling for you. You're I'd like, kill myself. Get rid of my penis, not my taste Absolutely. buds. Absolutely. I would, I would, I don't know what I'd do. I think that that that's maybe rough. maybe uh, it's rough, you know. But here's and, another thing, you know. Yeah. Wherever there's a sad story, there's also good news. So people that got, have you heard of long term COVID? No. Long term COVID is a very small population of people that get COVID. Um, Wait a second. Just don't recover. They never, as in, they're never at a hundred percent. They Wait. always feel lethargic. Wait a sec. This isn't. Maybe that's what I've got. <laughs> so I'm tired all the time. Um, it's but, similar. But this isn't... But you don't have COVID, so... This isn't... A, well, I've never done the test, but this isn't... A, you're not talking about the new, the, the strain in England that... Came, no, 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 it's no, not no, particularly okay. strain. A few people get affected by COVID more, like... As in they're... So what They happens? recover from COVID, but they never get back to 100% fitness. They're always kind of slow, and they basically, like... 
if let's say they were able to do like two kilometers of run very easily after 1k they're they're not huffing and puffing that's brutal and, though just like a and, prolonged and just like, and, but but here's the good news and they're still doing more testing on it mm. apparently a lot of people have reported that we thought that we're just gonna have to live with this we got the vaccine and we're back to normal Okay, that's pretty. Okay, that's incredible. So there's not enough data to say definitively that's the case, but a lot yeah. of people with long term COVID are reporting this. So there are good news, man. I'll be honest. Like I understand your concerns. Like when I first, I'm just skeptical. I'm guy, naturally skeptical of everything. That's just and, my and nature. You, and you should be. And yeah. actually, that's what I like about Australians too. Like just you are. You guys are more skeptical. <laughs> we just take shit, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but and and I'll be I'll be honest. Like when I first found out about <clears> that. Um, blood clotting episode in Australia when like it came for some reason whenever it was happening overseas you're like I don't know the TGI seems to be a good <laughs> enough but when it happened here I was like I don't it, know it, if I want to do it it makes it a little more per personal yeah it makes it like well it could happen it's Russian roulette I know yeah. the odds of it are way less than what an actual Russian roulette yeah oh, like, way way, worse. way higher uh, yeah one in six is much worse than one in one thousand yes it is yes it so is then like you know if people win the lotto, that's yeah. the worst kind of lotto ever. I'm just, my concern is that that number will keep dropping. I hope not. I hope not. But yeah. they're still continuing with it. I think what the other thing they're now doing is that some people who are more prone to getting blood clots are not being offered the AstraZeneca vaccine. Even yes. They're being offered like Pfizer and whatever <clears> the other. Because people with, you know, if you have high cholesterol, you're more more inclined to get blood clots. Yeah. Like if you have heart condition, if you have diabetes. But the fucked up thing is, Miss, it seems like people that get blood clots are not people that have pre-existing conditions and shit. That's bizarre. It seems like young people are getting, if right. you're healthy, you're apparently more likely to get blood clots than if you are like really old. That's almost- This is why the instructions are avoid yeah. giving it to people under 50. And you're like, what? Yeah, that's almost like- that's 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 almost like more scary in a way, isn't it? Because it's kind of like fit and healthy. Look out! Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but like, yeah, it, it's useless to even say anything about it because but there's there's yeah. no We're just, there's no out. Like, no, no, no. I understand. We don't have we don't the have government the, really fucked this up, man. Yeah, like they really, really did fuck it up. They put too many eggs in one basket. Dude, are we gonna say it? One of us has to say it. What? The liberal government. <laughs> I was standing in for Jordan there. Uh, the go on. Government. And they like straight up lied to us throughout the process. They were like, we're the first in the queue. We've got 10 million doses of Pfizer. We've got 100 million doses of Astra. We've got 20 million doses. And I'm like, yeah, we're 24 million. That's heaps. Yeah. But it turns out they were like, I guess they weren't lying, mm. but they really underestimated, which they shouldn't have, well, the, how much demand would be mm. for these vaccines. But, so like, but it's the, I feel like that's classic libs of like, you know, they're not known for their uh, social investment, like s social infrastructure. They don't give a shit. They just gut social infrastructure. They're just like, fuck hospitals, fuck Medicare, fuck schools, fuck healthcare, privatize healthcare. They're, they're not, they don't give a shit. Do you know? you know what it was? I think like when COVID hit and uh, Scott Morrison's uh, popularity went up, mm. um, he was like, he I can go to Hawaii. Really cocky. Yeah, and, and I think they got lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, "We've got this." Yeah, like, and they keep telling us how much better off we are from the rest of the world. Like, I mean, I don't know. I think Jordan's made an entire video on this. So yeah, but you know, like, they they did get cocky. Yeah, they got they got a what's the word where you uh, yeah, I forgot the word, but yeah, cocky. Like they um, careless. They just got careless, really. Um, yeah, and I agree. Um, but yeah, you know. All right. Anyways, look, we'll we'll move on. So I'll give you an update on uh, my second dose. Let's see how he goes. The first <laughs> dose that I got, honestly, I came back home and I felt fine. Um, you and I fine. got like a a bit of a fever. I had chills, but like really manageable, not like a high fever, mm. a low fever. And then I was fine. My brother and my dad also got on the same day, and their arm was hurting yeah. throughout the night. My arm was like it was fine. Yeah. But they say that the second dose is worse. Right, well, look, yeah, that's good info there. Good info there. So you are you guys are all right. Everyone's saying complacent government. Yes, absolutely. And there's just, there's there's so many things about the whole complacency as well. Mm. Anyways, um, look, we'll move on to our next topic. <laughs> just quickly. Yeah. Uh, N-nilly, L, I don't know how you spell this. N-L-Y-T. 
TND11 said, R.I.P. Ali. <laughs> Why? Oh, because I'm going to die soon. <laughs> Everyone's saying R.I.P. Ali. Keen... Keena Gator, R.I.P. Ali. <laughs> Stop saying R.I.P. He'll probably outlive us all because of this. Or, or die much earlier. No, look, you know, I, again, Dude, I, I don't know. I haven't looked into it enough. I, I can't just sit here and say, I heard Alex Jones say it gives you dementia and be like, facts. I'm like, no, not facts. <laughs> One very, very radical polarized opinion that is probably but it not is, true. It is good that you are critical about it. Yeah. Look, uh, the first segment- Rest in that, Pakistan. Uh, the first segment, the second, what? Rest in Pakistan, R.I.P. <laughs> Ali. Rest in peace. Right, okay. He will be missed. Rest in peace, Ali. Everyone's saying rest in Jesus peace. <laughs> Come on. I thought I did a public service. It, look, it looks like our audience is very skeptical as well, but you know. Oh, maybe I'm not helping it. But let's just say I got the good one. Hopefully, you get the good one. Yeah, too. yeah. Um, but all no, right. moving on. The, we can the, move, the first look. There is there's a bit of a there's a reason why I want to bring this up. Yeah. Um, it's about um, oh shit. Peter Dutton. Yeah. So there's this new <coughs> problem, which I, before I get into yeah, this, yeah, I want to yeah. make an announcement. Just before I went, just before I came on this pod, I got a message from someone that lives in Melbourne, and um, they asked me this. They were saying that, hey, um, mm. there's a there's a few um, there's a few refugees and asylum seekers that need help mm. in terms of like housing and stuff or whatever do you know anyone like legal? that is involved yeah. in this um in this area and i was like i don't know anyone personally but what i can do is i can do a pot shout out shout out and yeah. if one of you listening is involved with asylum seekers or or know someone that is like law lawyers or like ngos i think ngo anything really i think uh so i can hook you up with the people or like the representative that needs help Get in contact. Yeah, so I don't know. That's 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 because I think they reached out to know. Ali, and Ali was like, uh, "I'm still doing my law degree, bro." Well, I I, just, I don't I, I have I have no experience in this. So I don't yeah. know how I could be of help. But Should you give an? Do you want an? Uh, oh yeah, just email? like hit me up on Instagram or email Instagram. me on like do, podcast do in, at yeah. friendlyjordies dot com. Um, yeah. and yeah, PSA that would work it out. But good okay, on you. The the here's the thing about asylum seekers. So you know, ever since um. There's this huge, I think it's a criminal scam, which is right under our nose. And because it's about asylum seekers, no one really gives a shit or knows about it. So the scam is, you know, ever since the the liberal government came in, whatever, in like 2013, 14, mm. the whole stopping of the boat people, on the surface, it stopped. But then there's this new scam, which has been brewing. Mm. So what's happening is that it's, uh, organizations within Australia are asking migrants from like countries like Fiji, Thailand, India to come to Australia mm. on a visit visa, apply for asylum over here. And there's a huge demand for uh, picking fruit mm. in regional Australia that you could get sponsored for. And that would be your pathway to immigration. The problem is this is this pathway does not work like, because in order to be considered a refugee, you need to be a genuine refugee. You cannot be an economic migrant. I was gonna say asylum is not an so economic migrant. So 95% migrant. of these people are getting rejected. Right. So basically then On, they have to go back home. And they were told- But they have been the told that they would wrong get Wrong information, it. really? Is, so they've been basically scammed off of money. The thing oh, is- shit. They don't go back immediately. So they still stay here for like three years. And it just, they're, once their um, application gets rejected, it goes into the tribunal, which is um, called the um, Administrative Appeals Tribunal. It is a, it's before court. It's like a independent body, which you pay, you don't even have to be a lawyer to be a judge in it. But they basically assess and say if the Department of Immigration made any mistake. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a lawyer. <laughs> it's interestingly, just a, look, <laughs> I know I know a bit about AAT because I've studied about this. You it's don't the, have to be a lawyer. It's just the fruit it's picker actually, there being like. <laughs> He's like, when the mango goes down, the gavel. <laughs> you know what it is? It, there's actually, here's your corruption bit. It's actually um, people, liberal party politicians yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Are, um, that, that basically are have been fired Bunyip. or have left. Yeah. They get cushiony jobs in the AAT where they shit 
sit there and they get like I don't know three hundred four hundred thousand a year out of consultants, it. Uh, yeah, and they just decide fates of uh, refugees and right, shit. right. But anyway, so so it's been building up this backlog of cases that go into the AAT mm. because all of them are getting rejected. You cannot get a visa if you're right. not genuinely threatened, or those are the rules. And the government doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. But the do, cases keep building up. Do they um have they admitted that? Is it like is, is has it been proven? Do they actually have they actually admitted that they've um, given the given contrary information? Well, the, I'm guessing the organizations that have asked the basically have scammed these people. Are, that was are, government organizations. No, no, not government. Oh. Organize like business, private enterprises oh, right, that right. have tried to do. It. I think their defense in court would obviously if they are even taken to court like it's it seems like a thing that the government does not really care much about right um but their argument would be that we didn't guarantee you that you're gonna get it we said this is a potential pathway uh, now if it gets rejected i'm sorry but do you think they said that they probably 100 they would have said that like i'm trying incentive is for them to come over because they're getting a lot of money from yeah i'm i'm pretty certain that they would not guarantee it so do you think they've been scammed I think they've been scammed. Right. I think they've been sold uh, a dream that is not possible. Hmm. The dream was that because of COVID or whatever, there, there's this huge labor shortage, which is true. They would have Googled it and they would have noticed that, yes, there is a labor shortage hmm. and Australia needs people to pick fruit. Again, that's also true. But the pathway to picking that fruit was faulty. Hmm. I mean, I... I, I sort of assumed that was just how the policy was anyway, but it wouldn't have been fair. It would have been it would, be, would have been fucked if there were, you know, if they gave false information or false pretenses, or if they even sort of like, sort of presented the narrative in this way, where it's like this is how you can, uh, you know, get Australian citizenship, and then yeah. and then just being like, just kidding, like. That would be fucked, you know. It would be, and you could only imagine, like people that come here, they they want to burn work. all their bridges before yeah. coming, right? There's, right, shit. I know so many. You know what's the other thing? It's not just the the economic impact of having to go back. Mm. It's the fucking emotional impact that it has on people. I know. I know personally. I know people that are trying to get citizenship and. One of the biggest arguments that they make for just like make or break, I need to get it. Mm. Like there's no other option is that the social stigma that they face if they go back. Really? Basically, as soon as they go back without citizenship, right. their entire community say, you're a fucking loser. Really? You ha- you went there and you still came back. Like, is there anyone more useless than you <sighs> on earth? So they, so they- Is have, that what it's like? Their families do it. They're like, you were our ticket to like- Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, some sort of like a better life mm. and you have come back like we invested in you we sent you over there right to because they had to back. yeah because they're not they're not like rich people they no, had to save no. yeah that, Usually, that would be hard and the thing is there if you're if you're rich coming to australia or any other you first can, world country is, is rather easy yeah, yeah because yeah. a lot of people go through like these business visa programs which is invest two million dollars and you mm. will get citizenship yeah, yeah. but these surely, guys don't have the two million dollars but surely that that's been I would assume that that was the policy from from forever. That it was like you come over, you work for a while, maybe you get sponsored, maybe you don't. I don't think. I, I, I don't. It's changing. I think. Look, I think there's a long term trend over here. The long term trend was that migrations really began. These mm. large scale migrate migrations have existed for thousands of years, but large scale migrations that we where you know people like me are very commonly. Uh, observable, let's say, in Australia. <laughs> Less so in Australia. You go to places like the UK, the US. You know, US is like a majority or is going to be majority minorities. All of this has accelerated since World War II, right? After World War II, there was an immediate need. A lot of people had, a lot of men had died and you needed factories that needed people to work in. So women filled in a lot of that vacuum and then they got these um, workers from the third world. If you're in if you're in France, they picked ex colonies like Algeria, Morocco. If you were in the UK, again, ex colonies like India, and mm. they pretty much own most of the world. Uh, uh, Afro Caribbean, and the demand was steady because the Western world was still largely a manufacturing society that was that needed labor. Mm. 
we're now moving away from that where we need less people um our economy is changing for the same job you need less people and it's more about specialization it's more yeah. about specialization so the requirement for immigrants is just lowering having said that there are still there's massive skill shortages in australia because of covid like i know um I know like um, computer programmers that would have gotten $60,000 a job if they were lucky that are now being like offered $100,000 wow. because of, because there's just been the skilled migration was halted because of COVID. So there is still a wow. big requirement, but those are highly tr skilled people. Yeah. Um, that was not the case in the, you know, the post-war immigration. But p places like Canada literally picked up entire villages. <laughs> they would go to places like India. So the Canadian government would say, okay, well, they'll go to like places like India. It's like we'll we'll take an entire village. Shit. That's how much people. That's how many people they needed. That's <laughs> clearly not the case. So the, the 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 migration rate will have to drop down, particularly those kinds of migrations. Mm. And the other the split, the other problem about that is that there are more people that want to leave their countries. So this is what's creating that rift. Yeah, okay. And you'll just, you'll have to fucking, you'll have to deal with it. There's there's no other way to, and with climate change, there's going to be more and more people that would want to come in. Oh, that completely changes And there's going to be less story. and less people that we would want in. Yeah, I mean, so there is a huge demand of, of like immigration, like there's heaps of people that just want to still come to Australia. Yeah, people still want to come to, and with COVID, most of the economies in the world have contracted, mm. which is um, one of the biggest push re push factors. I'll give you an example. Like when, it, when my parents decided to move here, it was during a recession yeah. in Pakistan. But more importantly, it was during um, uh, like violent, there yeah. was an uptake of, uh, this was during like post 9-11 mm. terrorist attacks. So Pakistan, went from being largely safe to really not that safe for a bit. And now it's gone back to again, being relatively safe. Mm. Had, had those two combinations of like uh, extremism increasing and uh, an economic recession, had they not occurred, I wonder if my parents would have decided to move. They probably wouldn't have. They probably wouldn't have. And so th those are one of the, the, the larger push factors because my yeah. dad had a decent job and like we yeah, were part see, of the, we were having, yeah. it was easier for us to well, move. I mean, I don't think it's like, you know, I understand. I think if there's someone like fleeing from like a war torn country, it's like a legal right to seek asylum. But, at the, but my problem is like, I, I don't, I don't see, I think I think apart from that factor, if you are a skilled worker and you specialize, you're specialized. Isn't it just common sense that we want people apart from people that are fleeing, fleeing war torn areas? That aside, um, you want people that are skilled as opposed to just like unskilled. It's it's literally the difference for me. Like your parents had either skilled or like money. I think that's kind of important. Like it's just yeah. to come like you know, like economic migrants with no skills that can't speak the language is like, well, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Here's, like, here, here's, a, you know? here's a technical problem with having that view. The view is right. Like if, in terms of economic utilitarianism, yes, you don't need people that are unskilled. You need people that are highly skilled. I mean, you don't As, have to call it that. No, but, but <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. But the problem is that- I wouldn't go that all far. All of our but. international laws- were set up post World War II, where the world was different. Mm. So right now, legally, your opinion is wrong because what you're saying is illegal. Anyone, <laughs> anyone, right, that seeks asylum in any other country, uh, based on uh, persecution Anything. that is racial, political, ethnic. There's a few other categories in here. You have to offer them asylum and you have to process them. Right. As a, you, it is illegal for how you to you, send them back. But how do you quantify that? Like what, what is the... Well, then that's what the entire uh, pro of application process is about. Right, yeah, yeah. You decide if they're legit or not. But this was set up at a time when most of the countries wanted people like that. Yeah. They had yeah, yeah. no problem with it. They set this precisely because they wanted 
a lot of labor coming in from these places. Like the U.S. was on the like Native they came people. up with these humanitarian sort of laws, but it was also like it was mainly it was, it was mainly it was way an get, economic rationale. Yes, behind yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, economic rationales complement humanitarian approaches. Totally, yeah. Now we're living in a world where our laws are based on that time, where the economic rationale has now changed. So now all of a sudden you're getting countries that are just willing, not willing to accept international law. You get a bunch of boat we'll people. reform the law. Let's say like you live in Greece. Yeah. And there's a boat full of Libyan migrants that come to They're your doorstep. To, yeah. There is a war in Libya. They qualify oh, well all then, kinds of asylum yeah. If there's a war, I but think Greece, absolutely that should be. But Greece is going through one of the worst, worst recessions. contractual recessions yeah. in their country. They're still going the through economy, that, right? Their economy just has to readjust. They've, yeah. sh- they've shrunk by 20% and they've just stayed there. It's That's fucked. It's brutal. But, and, and you understand them. They're like, imagine 20% of your economy shrinking and then there's a bunch of these people that come to your doorstep you're who like, you're legally obliged to accept. You know what ends up happening? Some right-wing parties go like, fuck it. Isn't that These what happens? Laws are, that's what's happened. Yeah, they still so in in Greece. They, they're called like, there's a right-wing party. Yeah, they're, they, some of them live in Greece. Some of them have been thrown back, which is, uh, you, they. the thing is, even migrants realize that their, their future isn't in Greece. They're usually <laughs> wanting yeah. a passage to Germany. Yeah, yeah. So Greece just like, all right, you have to take another passage because we're not allowing you. So they yeah. end up just being stranded. So anyway, so what I'm saying is that Either these, this is the problem with these universal constitutional laws that we end up creating. Like from now onward, for the rest of humanity, this will be the law. It's like, dude, <laughs> circumstances change, <laughs> and your perceptions of human rights will change with that because yeah. the world is a harsh place. Uh, humanitarian is well, it's a forever shifting place. I mean, <laughs> there's a difference between being an ideologue and being pragmatic, even. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's almost like the, that law is sustainable to the point where something is physically unsustainable. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't. Yes, I understand what kill, you mean. Kill him with kindness. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, we've got, we've got, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's sort of just like this many people, uh, our economy can't support this many people. It's like, well, let's, we should try to give them a shot. And it's like, sure, but the infrastructure might crumble. The whole thing might fall to shit. Yes, and it's clearly evident, at least in the last 20 years, where in Australia, the infrastructure well, has not been able to keep up with the with yes, immigration. Yes, exactly. Uh, and so, you can so think the, the libs again for that. Yeah, yeah, and well, this is a case even in the US, their infrastructure is crumbling. It's but Is that because the Republicans? It's it's both. Right, right. To be honest, like it's it's hard to just pick a villain over here it's both mm. um so you're saying that the laws should be reformed or they should have i'm saying oh i i'm not saying that the look ideally in a world these laws are good yeah you but, don't want to turn back someone that is being but there's that, that has a reasonable chance of getting no no i'm not i'm back. not saying you should i'm not disagreeing but, with that at all but, I'm, the, but i'm saying that like those are, look you can if you look at if you read a, a book like the strange death of europe by douglas murray and look at the numbers yeah, in Germany and France and England to a lesser extent, um, the law has been abused by uh, economic migrants. That's just a fact. Yeah, and, and like on, on a grand scale. You it know? has, but that's what I'm saying. Countries that's, were okay with that, miss. Because they yeah. were, they wanted it. No, 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 I know that. But like, I don't know exactly what you said. I don't know if that's still the situation. That is definitely not the situation. But yeah. here's the- he, But I understand. Now, in it's an ideal world, look, you need to come up with, you need to reformulate laws depending on your conditions. But here is the issue. These laws came into being after World War II. Yeah. World War II was a such a pivotal point because yeah. what you had was basically America being the dictator of the world. It emerged as, with the Soviet Union, um, the superpower. Yeah. And the Soviet Union has it, its own issues. So basically it was able to set up all of these laws independently. Today, the US is not nearly in that situation. Mm. The US is, my opinion- Crumbling. Crumbling. And there's another segment that we need to talk about, uh, which is relating to mm. the US crumbling. So, but let's just say they nearly don't have the same amount of authority that they possess after the Second World War. Yeah. In order to reformulate these laws and get everyone on board, you need to have a figure like that. The other solution is that you try to work it in like um, 
uh, in a multi multilateral method where like you get the big players, which is China, U.S. The, the security f- and the Security Council members, the five and Germany, essentially all would have to agree with the new rules. Mm. And the way the world is moving, Miss, these frictions are increasing, not decreasing. So I just don't think it's likely that these rules would be reassessed. Mm. There just isn't any political space for it to happen. Right. Oh, because Whilst, it, in regards to war, wars. In regards to refugees, in oh, regards right, to yeah. how do we how do we deal with the refugee problem? Yeah. So the so the likelihood of coming up with new laws or new rules seem to diminish with time. Simultaneously, the problem of refugees is increasing and is projected to like boom so Especially because of climate change. War, yeah. So that that is like that factor is is so pivotal that it, it's almost like a completely different story. It's a, it, it's like that's like an existential crisis. It's not even about do you know what I mean? It's such a big issue. It's a huge issue. Yeah, like like it's almost like practically dealing with that is almost an impossibility. The the only thing like the only from my my opinion is the only way you know you look at the source of the problem. The source of the problem is green you know fossil like gas, coal, fossil fuel emissions. You want to you want to save you you want to solve that problem. Address uh, global warming. You know climate change. Yes, you do desperately. You need to do that yeah. because if you don't, then I, I'm. I, it's starting to freak me out for the, sure. The others will take over. <laughs> you know, like it's just uh, not sustainable if you keep. But no, let's it's just not. Say, it's let's, not sustainable. Let's I mean, just say uh, in an ideal world, let, let we alone, restrict ourselves to like the two point five degree um, rise, right? The, the the global temperature rise. That is enough. To create a lot of problems, we're probably at like what 1.3, 1.2 right now, and we've already the, started noticing. Let alone biodiversity and the bees and f- fucking plants, like literally biodiversity, like that is <laughs> everyone will die. <laughs> yeah, and and you've already with one percent, what you now have is uh, internally displaced refugees. You you see that pop up, yeah, and you mentioned that particularly near the equator, where yeah. Um, well, like the, uh, <clears throat> like the, uh, Aust- not Australasia, Polynesia, that region. Polynesia, anywhere that's closer to the equator, because it goes all the way from like uh, South America or like uh, Central America and Polynesia on the other end. But places where there is a high concentration of population, mm. that's where the one degree is really showing in effect. So I was looking right. at these studies. There were two studies. One three actually that I personally have read up on. One was based in Bangladesh. Mm. Bangladesh is again, it's, it's a, it's a, it's basically a Delta with, with lots of water. What's like a Delta mean? It's, it's basically where the, all of the, the rivers from the Himalayas, the Ganges river and all of these rivers end up flowing into the Bay of Bengal. Right. And Bangladesh is basically located around there. So gotcha. it, it, they've got they've got plenty of water, which is why there's such a high con- it's the most densely populated area in the world. So there's Shit. extremely high concentration of people in this small area. Most humans and it per was square meter. Most humans per <laughs> square meter. Essentially and that is true. And and it's because of the abundance of water. But the yeah. problem with global warming is that look, the, the icebergs seem to be melting and the water level seems to be rising. So it started off with the peripheries of Bangladesh being swallowed up by the by the ocean. So you had houses and villages that were just at the river banks, but now the river banks are the river. So they've had to sort of um, they've Maybe had to in. flee inwards into right. their own country. So they're not going, and they're facing problems with these other villages that are more inland that these people are taking over. Shit. Right. So that's with just one percent. Eventually. This would increase. So that's one example. The other example to, was. Can you link me <coughs> to some articles yeah, about yeah, that? I can. I can definitely do specifically. That. That's interesting. Yeah. In uh, in 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 Pakistan, there is a desert called uh, actually Pakistan and India both share this desert. It's called the Thar the Thar Desert, which is um which is a really interesting place because it's it's a harsh land, but it was able to sustain population because you can grow a few crops there. It's one of the only deserts in the world where you can grow crops. Man. And because of the rainfall patterns changing, so that place is becoming inhabitable now. Right. The droughts are lasting longer. Um, uh, there's 
more um, malnutrition, which is being caused because the crops Shit. are not at the same level. So those people have to move, and they're moving either inwards towards uh, Pakistan, towards more settled areas, and they're facing issues over there, or they're going because a lot of these people are actually Hindu, so they move across the border to India. Either way, there's refugees, internal refugees. Shit. That's one example. Then in India, Maharashtra, um, a state. Sorry, I can go on and on where no, like no, it's no, already it's in- evident. The problem is that it's beginning in areas that are that already are, that are arid and are, are vulnerable yeah, to yeah, yeah. climate change. And it will it will creep up if we keep going at the same level rate. Shit. And they're gonna come to us. Indonesia one of the big examples is Floods. Indonesia. It's just because it, Indonesia is such a weird place, right? It's a bunch of islands and so it's more susceptible to uh, water level tsunamis rising. and, and Indonesia is really close to us. So yeah. Those refugees are going to come our way, mm. so it's just a it's just a thing that's the rate of refugees is going to keep increasing, whereas the likelihood of these problem solving is going to keep decreasing. Yeah, fucking hell, bummer. It's uh, yeah, I don't know. It's brutal. I mean, Indonesians are nice, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but like uh, you know, I'm an advocate of big Australia, but even I recognize that these kind this is many, not the way I wanted it how to many, be bigger. How many uh what's a number of uh, Indonesians give me a number? Indonesia is the most populous Muslim country in the world. So their numbers I think are close to three hundred million people. Shit <laughs> That's a lot of fucking huge people. Country, huge country. What's Lo- Australia? Twenty million? million? Twenty-four million. Oh, but all 300 million people aren't going to move. No, I know. But, but that's enough a, would for us to be that's petrified. A, that's a big... Uh, yeah. It's it was... It was. Yeah. I don't know. Well, look. Food, food for thought. I was thinking about the... Um, was the Bali bong- bombings the only terrorist attack that happened in, in, in Indonesia that was like sort of... Not the only terrorist no, attack. No, no, no. But not, it the, was not the only. But I meant the, to like targeting yeah. Westerners more. No, they've been, but like Bali is, uh, we, we we remember Bali because like a lot of, uh, many Australians died in Bali. Usually when terrorist attacks would happen in Indonesia, it would be like other Indonesians. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, apart from like people getting busted for drugs and. Uh, I think it was the biggest. It was that but Bali. But there were others too. There were others? Yeah, there were others. Because like, I think 200, 300 people died in it. So it was a big. Shit. Big. It was really, it was really so bizarre. I remember going like in Indonesia, just we went to different islands. One island would be Muslim, one would be like Buddhist, one would be like Hindu. So like you go to one and you're in like Buddhist village and you literally catch a ferry to another island and it's just like, Allah, I'm like, what the fuck? It's so bizarre. Well, it, there's, let me share some good news too, which I had predicted a few years ago, but um, the good news is- More bunning snags as a result. <laughs> The good news is that that problem, the Bali bombing kind of problem and the Islamic radical problem is actually decreasing. Well, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I mean, so there, there are some positives. No, too. but look, these are the grandiose issues of our time, the existential threats to every person on earth and like, I've been moving house all day. I just can't deal with it, darling. <laughs> no, honestly, I don't know. Like, no, y- I, it's, it's, I don't, I don't, do you have any, what the hell are the solutions? They're so well, impossible. The one, the most basic and the most important one is that I should walk to work. Every country really needs to take climate change seriously because uh, the problem is, is, is Biden doing that? Biden is doing, but he's trying. But Biden, look, this is okay. Th- let's move on it, to I our because that was third segment. Yeah, because let's, let's this this was okay. I, I came to this realization, and I'm glad <clears throat> Jordan isn't here so that because this could get us canceled. But oh, just, I mean, he'll come back and it'll be canceled. No, Jesus, no, no, but like, look, it's this, look. This I think it's an observation worth noting. So let me first tell you uh, a new story, and I want to tell you my take on it. Okay, so I the have first to, I'm going to censor is, Ali here. Go on. The state of Georgia mm-hmm. and a few other states came up with new voting laws, which are more restrictive for people. Georgia so and the to, states, you're saying? Yeah, the state of Georgia yeah, yeah, yeah. in the United States. And I think- More a few restrictive. Other 
Yeah, more restrictive. Like you need, you know, the Republican playbook. They uh, beca- because so they're like a Georgia you need to is show a your ID. You need to show like your fucking butt cheeks in order. And yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, but they don't want illegals to vote. Yeah, and making sure you're not illegal. But basically, it's 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 essentially a gerrymandering tactic, right? Uh, they want they want to keep getting in. Yeah. Now, the Democrat incentive is for this to not happen, right? Do the Dems so, want illegal citizens to vote? To be fair. They wouldn't mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's, the Republicans wouldn't mind either if illegals were voting for them. This <laughs> is the thing. And this is where I'm going to, this is why I think it's important to Go note on. this. Sorry and, to, yeah, yeah. But so, so what's happening is that companies and corporations, company or uh, corporations like uh, MLB, Major League Baseball, <laughs> which. <laughs> Dude, that's a Simpsons joke. What? What's the Simpsons joke? <laughs> Are you fucking serious? What? It's, it's, it's a thing. Are you serious? Okay. Major there's League. Just, there's an episode of The Simpsons <laughs> where Bart, I have to say this because yeah, it's just yeah. too funny you said that. <laughs> Everyone will know this. I'm sure they'll know this. Uh, maybe not. But anyway, um, they're like, there's a thing where Bart gets on uh, a drug and it's like Tramaquil or something. It's basically like a... Uh, Ritalin, but intense, and it's just like it's a focus and focus, and it helps you focus, and it's like and it's just speed, and it, and it makes his pupils dilate. And they come home, and he's just like wrapping uh, tin foil around himself, and then he puts it, and he's got a trash can lid on, and there's 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 fucking you know uh, what are they called like coat hangers hanging everywhere. And it's like what are you doing, bro? It's like why are they, why are you uh, wearing a trash? Ca- uh, what are the what are the things for the coat hangers? It's like. It's to, it's to block the satellite that's been spying on me. And they're like, uh, okay, what's the who's the, who who's spying on you? And he's like, who else? Major League Baseball. <laughs> and then the best part is, you know how it ends? Oh. He gets a tank, and everyone's like, he's going crazy. And he goes and shoots. It goes straight to a satellite, <laughs> and the satellite goes down. And then it's just like, hey, he's right. They've got all our stats on here. Cap size, seats, seat choice, favorite bats. And then it's just some guy. I'll just give you the whole thing. The guy rocks up and it's like, Don Mattingly or whatever. And he's just like, hey, everybody. And he's like, what are you doing here? He's a baseball. And he's like, he's like, little Bart here was right. We are spying on you. And they're like, what? And he's like, now, would you like to know the horrible, horrible truth? Or do you want to see me suck a few dingers? And then they go, dingers, dingers. 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 Like, Boom, and then like as he's leaving, there's all the paper from the machine, and he just goes yoink and puts it under his hat. And it's like it. So anyway, very, <laughs> very, very funny that you well, were like, who else? Major, Major League, baseball. League Baseball. It's just funny. It's just funny, but yeah. But so Major League Baseball has basically refused to organize events, and a lot of corporations are boycotting Georgia because Shit. they're saying, and the and the 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 narrative is their narrative is that this is restricting. Uh, African Americans from voting, right? That's a civil rights issue. So unless Georgia stops doing this, we're not going to engage in business. Is it? They're American African well, Americans are citizens. Surely now, it's just illegal. Uh, illegal here's, okay, so citizens. it's different ways of looking at it. So yes, the issue is true. African Americans disproportionately get affected by it. So there is less representation of African Americans uh, during elections because they are less. Uh, Look, minorities generally are less. Um, uh, they are less likely to vote. Firstly, yeah, I know that, right? Yeah, and yeah. and so they have they're less likely to have all their documents together. Uh, they're less likely right. to have been registered have been gotcha. registered for decades so before. It's that. just another it's just another red tape. Yeah, yeah so it's not particularly like you're black, so you can't come in. But there are ways that do disproportionately affect African Americans. So on one hand, you could say, okay, that's a principal position. Here's another way of looking at it, and I would encourage you to look at it from this angle too. You have two, you have a divided elite in the US. They're both trying really hard to get into power because they want to form the political fabric of their country. Mm. Republicans choose voting suppression as a way to do it, and Democrats resist it as a way to stay in power or keep getting into power, right? There's no controversies over here. So no, that's a fact. Here's Ameri- another way Republicans of looking at it. Republicans have done that since Democrats are basically sanctioning their own country. 
usually sanctions so let's say a country like Iran has um does something starts producing nuclear bombs or whatever starts researching into nuclear bombs what we do is we're going to discourage you from doing this by putting sanctions on you so you're not going to be able to engage in the capitalist market as long as you engage in this behavior mm. america is doing exactly that but in a cannibalistic way by for its own country so what i'm trying to exemplify over here is that this is a society that is in the f- the friction is going bananas jesus christ where you've got the democrats <laughs> that have gotten into power sanctioning um sanctioning states from within their own country and by the way no the republicans the republicans that, are doing that no the democrats are because they're in power right now oh, and georgia right, is a republican so, state but how are they sanctioning georgia by saying that if you engage in the yeah. if you if you uh, legislate these new laws the corporations that are under our control are not going to do business with you. Now, the if Dems you think, run Major League Baseball? No, but that's what I'm saying. So Major League Baseball on the surface has done it as a corporate decision. But the reason, let's be real, capitalists don't have political opinions. Mm. All they care about is making money and Major League Baseball is not different. So the reason why they're doing it is because if they entertain Georgia, the backlash that they might be facing in blue states which is a bigger source of revenue gotcha. for them. So that's how Democrats are indirectly doing this. Gotcha. But the whole point is is that the it's becoming really cannibalistic where now they're sanctioning their own country. So not only does America have a problem with Iran, but America has a problem with America. What do you think the Republican dogma would be in 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 uh, justifying it? Well, I'll tell you what their dogma is, but I do want to. I do want to make sure that I get this point across because this is the main point. I am not saying that it's a good idea. It's a. It's Georgia is doing the right thing, and I am also. I am. I am pro African Americans voting. But <laughs> I think I everyone am, is. Yeah, everyone is. But but what I'm Sin, saying is that citizen. the Democrats. There is a possibility. There's another way of looking at it that the Democrats are basically using this social issue. Two authorities, like almost being like in a being a bit dictator like, because mm. the net effect of it is that if the laws pass, Republicans gain. If the if the laws don't pass, Democrats gain. Yeah. But Democrats are painting it as um, uh, 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 a civil rights issue, and the Republicans are painting it as cancel culture. So they're saying that. Look at these Democrats. They're doing this because they want to cancel anyone that has their own opinion. They're both giving tangents mm. of these social issues to mobilize their own factions. But the real issue is Bad. that there is a division amongst the elites and they're tr- they're really going after each other. Damn. That's some like red-pilled shit. But you know what I find a lot of the time? A lot of the times these sort of social issues are just... are just fronts for the elite they're pawns in the elite for the elite for the actual axis of power they're just sort of means to get to people's emotional side as opposed to because it's a lot easier to be emotional about racism than global warming no one cares about fucking like for some reason climate change is this uh it's it's like this weird malaise now of like it's 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 this bi it's it's this bipartisan you know what I'm saying people are, I, 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 I strongly encourage people that are analyzing this issue to not look at the process of what's happening but the effect of what's happening so if you look at for example voter suppression being a civil rights issue let's say you are successful who benefits is it a is it a social movement that advocates reparations for example that's one of the policies that civil rights activists mm. advocate for that by the way democrats don't agree with is it a is it a civil rights issue that will uh, give you reparations no this civil rights issue will have a net effect of getting more votes for the democrats mm. which somehow according to zeitgeist is better for civil rights now it might be true, but I think it's debatable. I think I I personally don't think that Democrats are angels and Republicans are devils. They're both have been equally responsible in fucking up 
mm. uh, minority issues. So I'm basically saying when you're looking at these issues, check who's benefiting from it. Mm. The way I look at it is, mm. is that the Democrats benefit if it goes one way and the Republicans benefit if it's going the other way. With the In either scenario, African-Americans aren't necessarily getting a lot from yeah. it. Yeah. Would the takeaway be, just to zoom out, um, it seems to me that if you are going, uh, like going on the banner of cancel culture or racism or whatever, it's like, uh, it's almost obfuscating the truth because it's like, well, let's scratch the surface. Cancel culture, no, it's actually power. Racism, no, it's actually power. And I th- those things do conflate, but but that's you've hit the nail. You've hit what, what's the expression? Hit the nail on the head. Nail on the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it's p- one. Basically, but I look at it is simplified. Mm. There's a stratification of elites. If things go one way, one elitist group benefits. If things go the other way, another elitist group benefits. But surely, if the Dems, Dems are the lesser of two evils because they're generally speaking, their policies are better for people and the world. I'm not arguing that. Right, I, right. Sure. Yeah. Right? But what I'm saying is- Generally. That it's a shit show nonetheless. Yeah. That there's a fight going on. Now, there might be someone that you go for and might be someone that you don't go for. I'm not saying who's better. I'm saying there's a fight and this fight is getting dirty. And this relates to our- li- And I'm, I'm taking full use of Jordan not being here. This relates to our- <laughs> Big Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Our, my my last point, not big Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The quad, the quad, is a um, is a political a uh, political coalition. Let's say, which is quad. a it's it's it consists of four countries. Do they all ride quad bikes to their meetings? <laughs> that's, the, that's the only thing that's left. It's uh, <laughs> it's got Australia. It's yeah. got India. Yeah. It's got the U.S. and Japan. Is this, this wasn't anything to do with Keating. No, it, ha- it, has, it has a lot to do. It's actually Obama's brainchild. When okay. Obama came into power, he was a smarter man. So he, he, he had this policy called pivot to Asia, which his, his analysis that. was, I that. we're too bogged down in the Middle East. The Middle East is useless. We're going to be self-sufficient in oil soon. We don't really need their oil anyways. We really need to focus on Asia Pacific where we're losing our prominence. Mm-hmm. Correctly so. And then that's when he came to Australia and he made the the, the memorable uh, pivot to Asia speech. But one of the other things that comes from it is the Quad, which is the alliance between these four countries that I've mentioned to counter Chinese influence. Right. Or at least that's what we've been told. I now, see why you were waiting for Jordan not to be here. No, no, the, the reason, okay, I'm not giving you, on this particular, even though the last segment had a lot of my opinions, I'm not gonna give you my opinions on this. Okay. I'm gonna give you the opinions not opinion, sorry. Facts mm-hmm. from a recently declassified document, Ooh. US government document, Holy right? Holy shit. So in early January, 2021, the US government declassified a document prepared for the Trump administration. It's called the US Strategic Framework for Indo and Pacific. Now, again, uh, these are quotations. Mm-hmm. The objective of uh, US, um, US uh, uh, presence in Asia Pacific is Quote, maintain U.S. primacy in the region. Understandable. The drafters of the 2018 policy from U.S. National National Security Council noted that the threat from China was not from its military. Quoting, Mm -hmm. rather the United States is worried about Chinese developments in, quote, cutting edge technology, including artificial intelligence and uh, biogenetics. The U.S. government's objective, according to the document, was to maintain American industry's innovation edge vis-a-vis China, which does not only mean to enhance US industry, but also to prevent China from getting access to technology and finance. Hmm. Loss of US preeminence in the Indo-Pacific would weaken our ability to achieve US interests globally. This is what the US is saying, right? But the challenge posed by China is different. China is the only country with economic, diplomatic, military, and technological power to seriously challenge the stable and open international system. Systems, rules, and values. Anyways, 
What this document is essentially no, no. These are the uh, these are the quotes that I highlighted. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What this document is essentially saying is that U.S. is not necessarily afraid of China no, because of its military. The military is big, but the U.S. is big. Even today, dwarfs Chinese military. Russian military was always really big, right? But the U.S. didn't think that Russia was nearly as big of a problem as they think that the uh, the Chinese are. Because U.S. basically has had the supremacy of cutting edge technology throughout the world, or even if it is not U.S., let's say it's Japanese or it's European, it's affiliated with the U.S. Chinese mm. are now making indigenous uh, cutting edge technologies. Right? I remember when I was at university when Chinese first banned Facebook in China, early days. There was this whole problem. There was this hue and cry. I remember we, I had to write like a paper on it too, which was about um, uh, how this is uh, uh, against freedom of expression, blah, blah, blah. I remember writing a paper on it, which my professor penalized for me for. He, I, t I tried to write in that paper. I tried to argue at that point that this has nothing to do with freedom of speech. This is a protectionist policy to develop their own platforms. They mm. don't want US based platform. And that's obviously what US would want. US I mean, would want both. Facebook to be, you could be both, but th their, their argument was that we want to make our indigenous ones, right? Mm. Facebook is happy with everyone using their platforms. They start hating it when people start developing their own. Mm. And, and, and they're right. The 21st century supremacy is going to be based on owning these technologies. True. So they have an incentive to stop China basically contain them so that they don't take over their uh, technological supremacy. And how do they do it? They do it by forming a coalition, which is the Quad. Right. China, US, Japan, what do they, and India. What do they do? Well, one of the things that has just come up is that China was supplying vaccines to, well, this is our job, right? Which, I, which is a good thing, but like I'll tell you why it can go bad. So China was supplying vaccinations to uh, these, uh, a lot of these third world countries that couldn't afford it, mm -hmm. uh, the South Pacific, uh, and the US and all of us, have, like all of the Quad has come together and said, look, China is gaining a lot of influence in these countries. We need to counter this. So Australia will contribute, but you need to start supplying vaccines to your neighbors so that they don't completely go towards China. Right. Which is a good thing. And they're saying that we'll, we'll help you pay the bills for it, which is why Australia has ordered 150 million vaccines or some shit, right? We have a population of only 24 million. The intended purpose is for it to go to a lot of these other countries to buy influence. Now, this is a good thing. Who would hate developing countries that desperately need vaccines to get vaccines? But the intention is bad. The intention isn't that we need to make sure that the world is vaccinated because this is a global strength pandemic. Strength and economic doubt. It economic. is to buy influence so that you can resist China. Yeah. Which is, again, causing more frictions. So what I'm essentially saying is, and this is, this is the controversial aspect, and this is my opinion. You may choose to not accept it. You may choose to accept it. We're being played by the US over here. We're not nearly getting the same level of benefits. The drawbacks for us are much higher. The drawbacks for US are minimal. In fact, I suppose if I was if I was an American, I wonder if I would be against it. I mm. probably would because of my anti-war stance, but in terms of an economic point of view, they're not wrong. Mm. Why would you want to give up the top floor? Mm. You'd want to keep pushing off the ladder, right? But they're involving us. And we are not same at the old, top of the ladder. Same old story. We are going to suffer from this, is my opinion. Mm. And we really, again, my, my, my... It's cool, dude. You're allowed to say whatever I know, you want. But my opinion has always been that we cannot be aligned. We need to have a non-aligned approach. Mm. Well, we leave the quad. To, not the quad, but be a force for good in the quad. Be the force that right. says, hey, how about instead of, fighting influence, instead of fighting for influence with China and Papua New Guinea we try to solve Papua New Guinea's problem by working with the Chinese. That will build I, confidence yeah. between our two countries. It would solve vaccination issues in Papua New Guinea. Mm. And it would generally be a force for good <laughs> rather than saying that, hey, you know what? The, the, this is how 
So the Chinese, for instance, have said anyone that wants to come to China needs to get the Chinese vaccine. Right? This is their effort to counter us and the U.S. saying we don't trust Chinese vaccines. We're not going to we're not going to use them at all. No, I so get they're it. saying, okay, if you want to come to China, then you have to take our vaccine. What I'm saying is, all of these things should have been decided on their merit rather than who owns the vaccine. Because this is only going to cause more rifts in the future. Wait, what do you mean on their merit? What I'm saying is that if we wanted to reject the Sinovac or whatever the Chinese vaccine is, or for that matter, Sputnik vaccine, we needed to have done enough testing to say that this is a bad vaccine. You mean it shouldn't have been politically motivated? It should not have been politically motivated. It should not have been based on where it's coming from. It should have been based on how good the vaccine is. And yeah. if, let's say, TGA came up to an independent conclusion that Sinovac is a good vaccine, we needed to, we needed to put that in our mix as well. It's and not, if they had come up with the conclusion that it's not yeah. a good vaccine, we need to say, okay, these are our reservations. This is why we don't think it's a good vaccine. You might be able, you might yeah. use it but we're just not going to give it to Australians. And that would have been fine as but long as the motivations yeah. were right. There's a lot of stalemates in that that, that, that is stopping uh, what you would like to happen. One being the libs here. It's never going to happen with the libs. So you need labor in. Um, and also I think from my little knowledge, knowledge or understanding on what, how Biden's going, it seems to me that Biden is just as harsh on China that Trump was. That's th this is what I've been like arguing even before Trump uh, I mean, Trump left. There's no tariffs is, though. He this, took the tariffs off. This right? is the thing that the both the elites are actually united on. So actually, there's there's a silver right. lining over there. So at least there's some things that they agree with. But hold on, Biden has been. Um, he lifted those tariffs that Trump was like tariffs on China, right? No, he hasn't. He is. He would lift them based on certain preconditions, like one of the. He hasn't lifted them. No, no, he hasn't lifted them. He oh. is he he is willing to talk about it, but he needs to basically. He because it seems to me like, you know, and everyone everyone knows I'm not some like pro CCP dude. That is true. Yes. That's not me at all. Um, but I'm very happy and very glad that China doesn't. Their, their economy isn't based on military on the military on like on America's model. They're not like an empire like that. They're based on infrastructure, and I think like thank God for that. And 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 you know just in that fact alone, I would like to think it's not it's not like the Russia um, sorry America Russia Cold War thing where they're pointing nukes at each other. It's like it seems like. China, apart from all its downfalls, which I could list endlessly. I mean, I think everyone knows about the, the downfalls and like the the negatives about China. But if you look at the positives, it seems as if um, it doesn't seem that unreasonable to want to deal with them on a level that could kind of benefit everyone. Doesn't seem that I unreasonable. Think we should... This is, I think this is the, I is think we saying? should look at it from what is the policy that is going to benefit us as an Australian? But, you, but our, yeah. our leader should really be just thinking about that. But that's not like what big picture, is in the is interest it? of Australians? But that's not like a big picture. I mean, the, it doesn't matter. That's it, what they've been elected for. They've not been elected by Kansas. They've been elected yeah, by but, but, New South Wales, Victoria. Yeah, but we're just proxies. I mean, yeah, but we they have been, but like this is, we're in a globalized world. There's axes, there's alliances. Like there's alliances. That's how it goes. Like there's China yeah. and Africa and they, 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 they have an alliance and there's Japan, you know, the quad. Like I would be, I would love for the world to operate on a level of um, uh, ice. What's it not isolationist? What's it called? Populism where it's like, let's build our own leather shoes again. And they'll last two lifetimes. I'm all for that. I love Australia just to be at work on Australia's behalf. But when we're buying goods from China and buying and it, and trading and you know our fucking McCain's chips came from Poland, unfortunately, that's not how it works. I look I, again. I understand that an alignment is is important, but those alignments and alliances are based on your national interest. That's where alignments come from. Not look, really. One of the, They're not though. Always, as a rule. But that's not how they work. They, they I, do every time. 
every well, we're alliance a shit is deal. based on national interest, or at least what's the perceived national interest for that? Country? Perceived is yeah, yeah, perceived yeah but, national interest. But it's not even that. It's not even perceived national interest. It's cowtowing. It's like America wanted us to buy these defunct uh, fucking uh, submarines, so we'll do it. Just why did why did we do that? But I think that's what we economically really need dumb. to be like taking into consideration is that African proverb. You know, when two elephants fight, grass gets trampled. Mm. The and we unfortunately could be this grass because uh, look look at Philippines. Philippines has been basically a colony of the U.S. since the beginning. Right. Philippines has been heavily aligned with the U.S. Okay. And <clears throat> Philippines has always been America's bulwark against early Chinese expansion. When China was not that big, they used Philippines. Now, obviously, things have gotten bigger. You've got to involve Japan and Australia. But initially, when you had things like Philippines, now. The Filipino president, President Duarte, went automatically from being from one of the allied countries to being like a bad player, and it all boils. He recently gave a he recently gave a very candid interview in which he was saying, and these were his words: "Obama was crazy. He wanted me to fight China. I couldn't do it." That was his response to it. He was saying he was mental because look. The U.S. would obviously want to use you when, even during World War II, you know, when the fight the started, English, it yeah. didn't start with France, and, oh, sorry, it didn't start with the British attacking Germany directly. The war began in Italy. The war began, in, the war was being played out in France. Basically, when you've got two big elephants, the wars really affect the weaker nations first. Mm. Until it gets really intense, it's going to be played around proxies. And we will be that proxy. That's why that's why Philippine quickly switched over. The context of the Philippine switchover is also really interesting because there was an international court, uh, there was a court case between Philippines and China about these um, man-made islands, these islands that China yeah. was building, yeah. right? And the court case was won by the Philippines. The, the um, I can't remember the UN body that does the arbitration, but they basically ruled in favor of Philippines, saying that China is illegally making these islands, and and uh, Philippines has the right over them. Mm. And Philippines responded by giving it to China, not because they were uh, wrong, but because they realized that fighting over it is going to cause them more problems in the long run than giving up over it. So and wait a sec. The Philippines went to the UN to complain. That the Chinese the U US lobbied Philippines to go to the UN. Yep. And they lost. And Philippines won. And China lost. Oh shit. Yes. So China couldn't make them. They still made them. And Philippines said, okay, you can make them. Uh, because Philippines look, the US obviously wants someone to keep rising up to China. But the question is, is it in Philippines' interest to do it or not? Even though you have to swallow a bitter pill, mm. they were legally right. It was part of their territory. So by all means, they should have actually fought for it. But then their president realized that that's probably not going to be in the interest of my people in the long run. Because I have to, you can't choose your neighbors. But then it always comes down to the argument of like, how much power? You give them too much power. Well, that's the line that you need to that's, balance, that's, right? But that's the question because everyone says that, you know, it's almost like, I know it's a, almost like a so simplistic that it's a childish thing to say, but you never know someone's intentions or their capabilities until they have total control. Yes. Say what you will but about what America. What you do know is that if you keep suppressing a rising power, they will attack you. Mm. That we already know. Like when we talk, look, look the, the thing is, when you look at these kind of wars, right? People always go towards World War II. Like, could you really reason with Hitler? Did you have to fight with Hitler? And you know what? In hindsight, I would say, no, you didn't have an option. You had to fight with Hitler. So people apply that same logic to China, that you need to fight with them. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to uh, accept fascism in your country? What they also don't, they, they focus on that one war, which was absolutely necessary. But then there's also a war like World War I, which arguably was not necessary to engage. I don't know much about World War I. I know like the Ferdinand... Dude got shot. It was a. It was actually they. They compared today's world to be very similar to the world before World War One. Uh. What you had in World War One was that Britain used to be a very strong power, 
And then uh, countries like Germany started to gain some power. And what ended up happening was that countries like the UK and France were like, you know what? We got to stop this. Just like China. Right. We need to stop Germany. Is and that what World War yeah, was and about? So, and then eventually what you had, which is exactly what's happening today, they reached a Mexican standoff <laughs> where there were enough alliances that everyone just had a revolver over each other's head. And they were like, if you shoot, I shoot. And the other person, if you shoot, I shoot. And you were just standing in that situation until then, that Ferdinand thing happened. And, and that, that was, was a catalyst. Where yeah. One person blew the trigger, the other person blew the trigger, and everyone started Who killed going. who in the Ferdinand thing? Uh, it started off with uh, the, the Balkan states and the Austrian-German empire being... Uh, so it, again, it started with the proxies. It didn't start with the main guys. Yeah. But the main guys ended up being involved. And First World War was catastrophic. Catastrophic to the point where like there's other issues that happen with it, but most historians, and I'm not, and I'm saying this as a general rule, most historians would say that it was not necessary to Great Britain for Great Britain to get involved in the First World War. Right. Once it started, it was something else. But and most historians would also argue that there was no other option for Great Britain but to fight with Germany in the Second World War. But there, here's another thing. The reason why the Second World War took place was because after the First World War, the terms that were set with the Germans were so repressive right. that they had to come and snap back. <laughs> you didn't give them enough room. You didn't give them room before, and then you didn't right. give them room to the point where you had Hitler. And yes, at so, that point, it was So you're much. saying that history is repeating itself right now. I'm saying that the war with China is not like the Second World War. It is like the First World War. Gotcha. And the First World War needed to be dealt differently from the Second World War. That's a fucking good point, dude. That's a really... I I, 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 uh, I feel educated right now. You don't learn this in school. No, honestly, that's a fucking pretty profound point. What, do you guys agree that's a These profound are, again, point? Again, my I feel like opinions, th- and no, they no, do no. not represent the brand of Friendly Geordies by any means. Public culture. <coughs> I don't, okay, there's, yeah, there's going to be a lot of... Christians uh, and Jews are trying to resurrect the Roman Empire and bring about the end time. <laughs> Look up who set the terms and what happened Oopsie. to Germany. Yeah, I. I'm not agree. sure what he's talking about there. We Ma Republic. Look, <sighs> those who don't remember history are doomed to repeat it. I don't think Biden is a stupid man. Is it the case that the powers that be, the military industrial comp- complex, the banks, whatever, that they just don't care or that they're stupid or that they're in too, they have too much power? Well, the predicament that Biden is going through, actually Obama described it really well. Um, towards the end of his term, uh, his second term, he said that, you know, I'm actually a good president now because I've got so much experience. Mm. So he, he described America, he's like, people think that America is like a speedboat. You become a president, you get behind the wheel, and then if you're going in a direction which is wrong, you quickly turn your direction and you move towards the other way. It's like, that's not what the U.S. is. U.S. is a massive ship. It's the Titanic. Mm. If you try to move it now, the effects are going to be felt five years later. It's much harder to turn a massive that's, ship. That's kind of so a So Biden has the same well. predicament. Like, when Trump left, it's not a speedboat. He can't come in and he can switch around. Mm. I know Biden personally is a dove he is yeah. very risk averse yeah i know if you ask biden personally he would rather not have a war with china i know i we already know for a fact that biden has spent enough time with the chinese to know that they're not they're a not warlike. irrational players they're mm. not mental like people think that anyone that's not you is just suicidal he re- he recognizes them as rational players but biden also recognizes that there are certain economic interests that the U.S. has. For example, let's boil it down to like a very basic one that Australia had to deal with. Huawei uh, establishing the 5G network in places like Australia and uh, in the U.K. Huawei, the Chinese company, has the best technology for 5G, has the cheapest technology for 5G. It makes the most economic sense for them to, uh, for us to give them the contract. U.S., on the other hand, is not there yet. But their economic interest is to make sure that Chinese don't take over these markets Mm. because it's their market. Mm. So they force us. How do they force us? They say, 
if you accept Huawei, we will not share any intelligence with you under the garb that the information that we will provide you will be compromised because the Chinese have your infrastructure plan, which might be true, which might not be true. But here's a definite interest. If you use Huawei, you're not using T-Mobile. And that's what we care about. We want to be the hegemon of technological uh, superiority in the world. And give us time. Give us five years, ten years. T-Mobile will get there. And then we will supply it to you. And because we're not there yet, you will not have access to that advanced technology until we are able to provide you. And you mm. know what? Australia, Australia has a difficult choice now. On the other hand, it makes absolute economic sense for us to go switch to Huawei and get our 5G network going. It will increase our economic uh, profitability. But yeah. at the same time, we might have to like piss off our alliance that is giving us like this naval... Um, Protection. Basically daddy. So we are in a difficult situation. What I'm arguing is that you need smart people to be able to navigate through this difficult situation. The, the, the Liberal Party, this is a bit partisan now, but I want to say this. The Liberal Party's literal policy is, well, we just have to do whatever the US yeah, says. I think that's an un and understood that's really from, I think, I think that everyone knows that. Uh, it's it's uh, and I I understand it on a nostalgic level where it's like, you know I understand it on 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 a level of like you know, I don't know like, the we fought in wars together we have the history together, you know, bully beef, surfing we both like surfing and we both we're Western you know we have a lot in common we're Westerners and everything, I get it, but it's definitely very naive i think that china could be like it scares me thinking the whole of like too much power but your world war one metaphor is like a pretty fucking good one and what's the alternative like we either go for, we either take a risk and see if they're fine or we take a risk and go to war i know which one's a better option so so you you, you, you know it makes sense and uh, like and you know it's ironic that they're <laughs> bankrolling us now by not now but you know china buying our resources is the reason why we're so rich. And it's kind of, it's kind of, you can't have your cake and eat it. You know, it's kind of been like, we're being hard on China. Hey, China, can you still keep buying our resources? It's like, well, which one is it? You can't, you can't do both. And like, it's hard, you know, it's, it's very, it's very, it's very difficult. I mean, his, I think Kevin Rudd was the closest prime minister we had that could do this, but is it possible? Oh, Paul Keating, has really good ideas on this too. And, and yeah. to your point where- Because Kevin balanced. Both of them balanced. Look, yeah. no one, I would not want, I would never say this, neither would I want it, to say we need to side with China. I'm not comfortable with it. No, As I mean someone either. with my views, I am not comfortable yeah. with completely siding with China. Yeah. But I'm also not comfortable with completely siding with the US. Totally. And you know, if you ask me like, personally, what would be better if we completely sided with China or we completely sided with the US? I might even say US. But that's based on because there's political political ramifications either way. Uh, yeah, and plus our culture is similar to theirs. Yeah. There's so many other reasons why we should be, but it's still suicidal to just completely. Totally. Like Keating always says like. Yeah. What does Keating say? Keating says. Has he written a book about this yet? Yeah. He's 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 written he's written a fair bit about uh, China about China and he talks about China heaps and he's a very rational voice on this he's topic. I, just, he says, I, yeah, he's, I'd he's like got to know this what he thing says. of like, um, every time we say, but then the US would be pissed off. And he's like, you need to develop some balls. And <laughs> we've been fighting wars with the US for over a hundred years now. You do not need to bring out your marriage certificate every week. They know whose side you're on. Just relax, grow some balls and take some decisions. Yeah. I mean, Keating was always a very like bull ram, like, let's become a republic. Let's change the flag. Let's, whoa! Like, he's very like that. Just to be like, come on, let's fucking push ahead. Like, I'm a little bit like, eh, look, just eh, let's, let's reel it back 10%, buddy. Let's just, you know what I mean? Just just with the headstrongness. Obviously, an insanely intelligent man and great policy, but like, he's kind of like Jordan, where it's just like, we're doing this now. It's like, dude, that's not a good idea. Too late, see ya! You know, like, that's what Jordan's like. And that's how you get things done. But... I wonder if you don't have to pull it out every week. I think maybe you're right. I'd like to think you could pull it out every few months, the marriage certificate. Yeah. You know, every, every few, few months. months. Like, like, 
let's like we get Huawei or whatever, and then uh, okay, how about this? How about this? This is something that like two examples, right? One is we side with the U.S. in terms of Huawei, right? We don't do it because it's too much of a risk. However, do we really need to be a signatory over the COVID, uh, COVID origin movement? You What's know up? where like we were one of the forerunners of uh, one of the one of the top countries that were oh putting an inquiry inquiry into it. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm again. I'm not saying that. <laughs> That co- that inquiry was necessary, or what? what I'm just saying, do we really need to be? Yeah, I know. Was anything found from that? Well, the WHO went and they came up with this. Uh, with their findings are that it probably started in a wet market, yeah. which is being criticized. Again, it is not in concern for me of where it started because it doesn't matter. It's happened. We have, we it's have happened. to deal with it. But yeah. you fucking um, you uh, Australia fucking s- completely siding and saying that no, we're gonna we need this inquiry. That meant that our wines, tar- our wines are not being able to get uh, exported. Our coal is not being able to get exported. I'm just saying we need to pick our battles, dude. It's a rational decision. I mean, everyone says, you know, the conservatives are like the rational. Get in the black. Be conser- Be conservative. A conservative choice is picking conservative choices what does conservative mean to like well it means to conserve but i mean like it's not that far from rationality try and conserve the economy you keep making well, it worse <laughs> no that's true though try to conserve the economy so don't put let's not do it let's not do a bogus investigation that is going to hit us with needless tariffs that's a con, that's a sensible and, and like a conservative perspective so you're right like it's kind of irrational to do that so like you know, and again, like it's, I, yeah, I, I understand. There's a lot of, you know, I agree. We shouldn't just side with China. There's, there's a, there's a long list of, of fucked up things that are on their resume, but like anything can happen here. It's like, we're not, I think it, people forget, well, maybe COVID was a bit of a reminder. It's like, you know, life can change pretty instantaneously, pretty quickly, pretty dramatically. So I agree with you. I think that you should pick your battles Maybe we shouldn't, maybe if we have the chance to not uh, jump on board with like completely superfluous grandstanding and acts of like flexing needlessly, and maybe let's not do that. <laughs> maybe let's look a little, let's a little bit, a little bit more tactical. Okay. This was right. Personal. Yeah. 100%. But yeah. like this was personally something that I found a little embarrassing, which went you know, it didn't get noticed, but I'll, I'll, one of the embarrassing things was that at U.S. pressure, we did that COVID inquiry. The oh, that was U.S. pressure. Oh, from I Trump. Mean, yeah, yeah, of from course, Trump. Of course, right. It was. We independently, even oh, even yeah. the Liberal Party is not dumb enough to just come up with that idea. <laughs> that so, so give credit where it's due. They did it because uh, because of pressure. Now, what happens as a result of that was that. The U.S. put sanctions on us. Oh, sorry. The China put sanctions on us on our certain things. We were left high and dry. <laughs> we had to like say, we need the, the rest of the world needs to come to our back. No one did. Right. People were just too afraid. They were like, look, we don't want sanctions too. Trump didn't even after getting us to do it. Biden administration comes in. One of the first things that Biden does is tell China, what's happening with these, uh, san- with these uh, sanctions with Australia? Do you know they're our mate? You can't do this. To which our government goes, yes, our big brother has finally stood up. This was what happened. This was, I looked at it as like, what kind of a pathetic administration are you running that you're dependent on external factors to fucking stick up for yourself? But str- Why aren't you in a situation where you're able to dictate terms yourself? I have something to tell you. Australia's always been like that. It, look, if you look at this situation, we were put into it by the US. And then if the US comes and sticks up for us, that's, what, that's the least they can do. You don't need to be fucking thankful about that. You yeah. put us in that situation. So the least you can do is stick up for this. But here's what I say. Australia should have been like, okay, we're not going to get 5G. We're not going to get Huawei because... Maybe that will compromise our telecommunications. We get your point, but we're not going to be part of this uh, COVID inquiry. No tariffs would have been put on Australia, and no one would have needed to stick. That's up what for should us. have happened. But I have, I, I might, I, I think there's a, I think there's an explanation for that. I think 
psychologically, and I'm not speaking for, uh, I'm not speaking for Australians in general, but I think there's a proportion of Australians that psychologically, I mean, I feel like this even subconsciously that we are just still this like baby state of the, of the British empire. It's like there's mummy over there and daddy over there. That's what it feels like. It's like, it feels like obviously we're our own country. I mean, fuck, we have our own long history and I'm not, I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's good. I'm just saying that like, I think that there is a contingency on a political level for a lot of Australians to have this thing of like, we're, uh, you know, sister Col- like the UK is mum. I mean, definitely for the libs and uh, Australia uh, and, and America's dad. And like, because of that psychology for someone like you, you might be like, why have we got any balls? But for someone like me, I'm like, that's all I know. I, and I understand that. Look, yeah. I don't want to be, I understand. And I'm not saying that's yeah. good. No, I, I mean, I, like, I know I, what you're saying, I, but like, like I'm just know, saying I'm that's, not, a, that's a, very um it's it's stuck in the say, past right yeah because you it, know, it, you, it, we're moving towards a really fractured world yeah. mommy and daddy are having fights <laughs> mommy and daddy <laughs> are having fights with other people who are uncles i know exa- and so I like know. being on side of one guy is a difficult thing because yeah. you know your uncle might kill your daddy exactly and so uh, well you look, need that's, to have a yeah, good no, relationship exactly. with your uncle exactly. daddy and mommy and also this is the thing mom and dad live in um let's say what's a good metaphor this isn't the right metaphor just purely geographically no 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 here's a good one mom and dad live in uh in in uh brisbane yeah but we live in tasmania yeah 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 so basically the stepdad lives way closer to us than daddy and mom stepdad lives way closer than where mom and dad live so even on a geographical level stepdad also gives us our allowance yeah, yeah, yeah. Stepdad gives us our allowance. So it's like mom and dad give us an allowance too, but stepdad is like- Slowly up in her, the ante. Yeah, and not only up in the ante, he can help us a lot or he can fuck us a lot. He can fuck us over a lot. And mom and dad are so far. And it's like, but we, but you're my dad, you know? Like you're my family, I love you. And it's like, yeah, I know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. And then you're like- the, the the uncle or the friend maybe is uh it's not not necessarily family, but they're kind of the, the one I see every day. They're the one that I deal with. I live in that area. I don't live in Newcastle. I live in Tasmania. We're in fucking Asia. So so you know, I understand that people want to be nostalgic to some degree, but maybe we can still hold on to some level of nostalgia and stuff. Uh, of like the wartime, or you know, like the comrades or whatever. We can still hold on to that. And not be just not not live and die by, like, the fact that we both surf. Yeah, I yeah, I would, I would very much agree with that. But that seems almost like it's so stupid. But that issue seems almost as triv- uh, sorry, almost as difficult as like the climate change issue. It's such a big cultural issue because it, sometimes it's you know, so like, hard, man. Like right it's so now, hard. You, we, 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 I, like I. I, I know Jordan's not here and you'll just think that I'm like, he's, st- he's speaking to me on a little earpiece, but I think we just need to have Kevin for life. Because like, I'm not saying, I don't think he's like the most charming man in the world, the smartest man in the world, but he's definitely smart and he's definitely charming and he's definitely forward thinking. And, you know, he was less radical than Paul Keating. Mm. Like he was a reasonable, fuck me, if you want to find a centrist that is reasonable that can talk to mom, talk to dad, talk to the neighbors. And I think almost, I think he might've been the only one, one that could more, keep them all happy. One more person because that, you need that to, you dad need to, needs to talk to is yeah. the Australian public. Look, right now, our uh, know strategy <sighs> is based on, there are, so, you know, there's, there's leaders that follow their constituency and then there's leaders that tell their constituency what's up. Yes. So you need someone like Kevin Rudd to come up and explain. Right now, Sky News puts pressure on the Liberal government. China, look at them. They're taking too much. What are you doing? Like, we need more submarines. And the Liberal Party's going, on on it, on it, on it. Yeah, yeah. Some leader needs to come up and tell the Australian public, look, these are the facts. This is the issue that we're dealing with. That would be nice. Now- ScoMo is not that. I would recommend- ScoMo is more the Trumpian. You need like great leaders for that. but. 
someone needs to be like someone needs to like explain to them that you you might need to reform some of your views on this because we need that's it. what has to happen because i have watched for my for, for jordan for my for my job for my for my day job i've been um i've watched basically every piece of kevin rudd talking about the murdoch empire piece of uh media there is so his news corp thing his senate hearing there's been a whole bunch of two hour conversations um and one of his main points was that he has a, so he has a think tank in america he's not a dumb man the americans just poached him straight away when he got out because like this guy's a fucking genius you know he's a smart man he understands like bilateral fucking international everything Chinese did too which is a testament to his intellect yeah totally yeah, yeah. oh of course yeah definitely um but what i was gonna say was uh what was i gonna say so like he spends a lot of time in america his whole point is sky news is the palam the, the, the australian wing of fox uh murdoch is trying to create a, sa a similar pol polarized environment in australia that um, is happening in, in America, or it has happened in America, he said it is happening slowly, consciously, on a, on, a, on a grounds roots level. This is what is happening, and this is the trajectory we're going in if Murdoch has 70% uh, control of the media. Number one YouTube page on YouTube, Sky News, all this shit. Um, mass control. He's a supervillain. Yeah. Um, so Trump, uh, fucking Kev, Kev was saying like, is this the road we want to go down? Because it's happening now. It's just more polarization. I mean, fuck, I found myself in it, swept up in it. It's so easy, especially if you're an emotional person. It's so easy to get wept, swept up on rhetoric as opposed to facts. And, you know, Kev was just being like, alternative facts is a, is a term now. It's like, this shit is getting out of hand. And America is the canary in the coal mine. And he's right. And, and, it'd be nice to, to just cut that head off and be like, let's just not do that. You know, it's a good society. We have Medicare. We have a good working wage. We have good social systems. We have good hospitals. We have good schools, had good schools, <laughs> had good. So it's already slowly happening, you know? And so like someone like that, like a centrist or a, yeah, not even Keating, just someone like that. That's like reasonable. He doesn't hate Americans. He doesn't, hate anyone he doesn't he, he's just a pragmatic person that he hasn't he, he, you know just trying to tie the loose end, try the ends together and be like let's just be reasonable here and have good policy and like we don't have to we're not gonna you know i have a think tank in america and i love america i understand uh, like america is like the they still are the leaders in the, of the free world despite all their horrible uh <laughs> lapses in like you know human rights you know that's what um, Jordan wouldn't say that because he's like so intense on his opinions. He's so like, you know, like tunnel vision with that shit. But like, you know, America still is the leader of the free world and he sees that. So like, we need another Kev. We, oh, we need just Kevin in again. Cause right, well, don't you, do you agree? I think so. I think yeah. we need someone like Kevin Rudd. Yeah. But I like you said, someone- There was a reason why he was kicked out. Yeah, of course. And it was more than just, oh, he's slightly less popular now. No, of course it was. And there like, that's why There's this a, shit is so, it's There so are forces that do not want someone to balance. No, of course that. And I'm, anyways, yeah. we've been out of time. We yeah. have actually gone over the normal time of the Who needs you, man? <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us today. We appreciate it all you all of you that ended up sticking around. Thanks so much for hanging around. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Kevin Forever. And yeah, sorry, again, uh, if anyone um, uh, works with it's refugees or asylum seekers or know someone that works with refugees, please hit me up on Instagram or podcast at Friendly Geordie's. 10 uh, out of 10, great pod. Miss love, love for pod. PM. Finally, someone says it. Bunning snags reform for all. Yeah, cool. So, like, I've been. It's like, so yeah. If if anyone, please hit me up. Uh, yeah, if I the, need to forward some contacts. If there's any anyone out there that's involved, uh, what what do you want to get them on? How can they get to us? Yeah, uh, email at podcast at friendlyjoys or hit me up on Instagram. Anyway, honestly, like, I think 
there's a few people that really need your help. So like any way you can grab a hold of me, yeah. I would. And thanks for all the positive words. Yeah, Everyone, thank you. <laughs> everyone's very happy. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for uh, watching this and we'll see you guys next week. And we'll see you on the up late. And, uh, join Patreon. Unfortunately, next week, Jimmy is going to be. <laughs> He's back. But yeah, join, if you want more of this, just all you got to do is join up on Patreon because we're doing another one right now and we'll probably just delve deeper. So if you want more, a small donation and uh, it's going to... Yeah, an hour. All or more. the money that you give on Patreon is going to be donated to the selfless trust of ourselves. Well, basically well, means just give it to us. But that's how we do it. That's how we can do it. It's, 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 it's tough out there, mate. It's the selfless trust of benefiting ourselves. All right, see you guys next week. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot.